Is it moving, sir? Uh, not moving. First slide is showing this prospects of value added in fundamental crops. Now. Uh, not second slide is not showing. Not showing. No. Okay. Now. No. That there is some problem. Now it is showing. Now this way, this way it is uh, showing. This so showing it is a uh, uh, newspapers coverage, I think, no? Yeah. Uh, background is showing. Now. Now it is a first slide. Second. Second slide, yes, yes. Third. Now third. Uh -huh. Yes, yes. Now it is changing. showing. Uh, say, huh, slide changing slides. Okay. Sir, so, can we start, uh, madam? Now. One second, sir. Okay. okay. Um, is it okay, sir? This much. Uh, now it is okay. This much size is okay, sir. A size uh, little bit, I think, uh, is small. Increasing this. Now it is increased. Ninety. I think this much only we can do, sir. Otherwise, uh, with the uh, with this, it will go. It's not showing, no, sir. Now. Me record this. Hmm. Abhi sir, change ho hai slide? Ah, nahi madam, change nahi ho raha hai. Nahi ho raha hai. Toh, hai. Screen share uh -huh. mode mein nahi aayega ye. Uh, F5, F5 F5 madam, jara F5 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 View slide share kind slide show. Abi dikh raha hai? Status of floriculture in India is showing this slide. Status status kaun se? Kuch aur hi share kuch aisa kuch aur hi aur hi. Ye ye dikh raha hai sir? Uh, uh, now it is showing a status of political India. Big uh, slide is bigger than previous one. And next slide also uh, pro this production status. Okay. Yes. Uh. So previous previous. I think I have to do this one. Everything is visible? Clearly? Haan, it is visible. Okay. So, can we start, sir? I am just time introducing. Okay. So, very good morning to all of you. Uh, little bit uh, problems we have faced is because we could not start in time. So, I am extremely sorry uh, from my side. So this program is called, uh, started very late, yeah, 10, 20 minutes. So we have a first speaker, uh, Dr. Ritu Jain, is senior scientist, uh, Division of Floriculture and Landscaping, IRI, New Delhi. So heartily welcome, madam, uh, for joining this program. On behalf of the Banda University of Agriculture and Technology, I heartily welcome you and express gratitude uh, to you for accepting our request uh, to uh, deliver this very, um, very important lecture on this uh, webinar prospects of value addition in ornamentals so as friend we know the uh, our uh, floriculture products uh, we export uh, to the other countries and products so around 60 percent share comes from these dry flowers and the valued products so this is very important aspect uh, in floriculture uh, trade so in the covid 19 also uh, we have faced this problem with the sector floriculture sector was sink down and uh, during this period, uh, experts suggested uh, to uh, means uh, uh, add the value of these products uh, so that uh, farmers should, should not go in loss. So before uh, starting the programs, uh, it's my responsibility to hide, uh, cite the biodata of the Madam Dr. Ritu Jain. She is a known face in the face of this uh, in the field of value addition of fundamentals in the country. 
सो मैडम इज ए वर्किंग एज ए सीनियर साइंटिस्ट डिविजन ऑफ पोलिकल्चर लैंडस्केपिंग आई आर आई न्यू दिल्ली एंड सी इज इन्वॉल्व इन पोस्ट हार्वेस्ट टेक्नोलॉजी ऑफ ऑर्नामेंटल इंक्लूडिंग वैल्यू एडिशन फ्लावर क्रॉप्स एंड प्रोडक्शन टेक्नोलॉजी फॉर पोटेड प्लांट्स एज इंडोर एयर प्योरीफायर्स एंड स्टैंडाइज टेक्नोलॉजी फॉर ड्राइंग ऑफ ट्रेडिशनल फ्लावर्स लाइक राइजन थीम रोज मेरी गोल्ड एंड अदर एनुअल्स फॉर मेकिंग वैल्यू एडिड प्रोडक्ट्स लाइक ग्रीटिंग कार्ड पेपर वेट एटसेट्रा she also standardized dwarfing with bougainvillea for urban landscaping and nursery men and she established the state of the art laboratory for value addition of ornamentals at iri hpi and copi she has written five extensively funded project sponsored for various uh, by various funding agencies dst dvt ppb phare and she is involved in teaching pg and phd programs and uh, guided to 12 pg students as a gu- uh, guide co-guide and member of the advisory committee and uh, especially the extension part this is involved in dissemination of technologies to farm women and adopted villages of iri and she is associated in establishment of gulmahar an ngo under ifls company which has provided livelihood to the rag pickers and commercialized value addition technology with flower image company owned by ms punam kamra and she is involved in conducting various training programs and uh, she is awarded with women scientist award by society of horticulture research and development certificate of recognition by delhi agri society and hindi vishesh uh, pravakta puraskar and fellow of chai and publications uh, she has 56 research papers and more than 200 articles and uh, 11 bulletins six books 11 proceedings so these are the brief bio data so uh, once again i welcome uh, madam ritu jain so please uh, madam uh, restart go ahead thank you dr tomar uh, at the outset i would like to thanks the organizer for providing me an opportunity to deliver a lecture on this uh, topic which is the need of the hour and uh, also i am uh, thankful uh, to dr k k s tomar personally who has asked me uh, before uh, starting this workshop he consulted me so thank you dr tomar and uh, congratulations to the organizers for organizing such a, a nice topic and they have chosen a very uh, apt topic for this workshop so uh, uh, thank you everyone so now i will start my topic this is prospects of value addition in ornamental crops as we all know and we uh, from the last 2 to 3 years we all are uh, facing the problem of uh, this uh, covid pandemic and due to uh, which there was a lot of uh, uh, losses has occurred to the farmers of uh, national and international level it's not in our country but in other countries also because of the lockdown condition everybody has faced this um, situation and uh, for the last two days we have heard a lot about this that uh, due to this covid pandemic situation lots of uh, flowers were wasted and the farmers they did not get the price of their produced and uh, it was the headlines of the many newspapers like you can see in the business line a hindu there was a headings like india's flower market withers due to covid 19 pandemic then floriculture business in vidarbha went as lockdown continues then farmers in Mar- maharashtra's palaghar asked to get ready to tackle locust menace so likewise there were so many there were many uh, newspapers they were giving the news uh, regarding this uh, floriculture that covid 19 impacts hit floriculture market it was the uh, headline of hindu for uh, hyderabad region so how the flowers were used uh, during this pandemic region uh, we know uh, that in pandemic situation the flowers were used to mo- give the booster to morale booster to the corona warriors especially the doctors and the flowers were showered on them so it was the only use uh, was done that time and uh, if you see the at global level also nobody might have thought that the flowers will be thrown on the roads and no there will not be any taker of these flowers so does anyone have thought that what floriculture industry will suffer during this crisis what happened that flowers they were allowed to wilt on the fields they did not received any dues from the wholesalers exports were stopped temples were closed and then any religious or social functions were all stopped so 
there was not at all utilization of flowers there was no required no no demand for flowers was there and even the farmers they have either left the crop in the field itself or they have thrown the uh, crop on the uh, roots so that the um, cattle can um, it can be used as a cattle feed so you can see here in this uh, picture the cows are feeding on the marigold flour which has been thrown on the roads so in all these situation we are left with the uh, one of the option of value addition it is the uh, one of the best option which can be utilized for uh, avoiding the wastage of the flower and to convert into a some meaningful entity which can be utilized by the uh, producer which will help him in earning some money so what is the role of value addition that value addition uh, it increases the economic value and appeal of the commodity how does it increases the appeal of the commodity see if we take the flowers and we uh, make it into a some kind of arrangement we make some kind of uh, garlands then it means its economic value is increasing as well as it is uh, pleasing to the eyes and uh, pleasing to the customer and uh, this value addition it involves genetical changes processing and diversification genetical changes means to adding something new color as we know the floriculture is a fashion driven industry we every day we look for novelty okay novelty means we are looking for some uh, distinct colors of the flowers like we always want that blue roses or black roses and we always look for green color of uh, flowers like chrysanthemums and all so that is in, uh, possible only by genetical changes and uh, except that genetical changes there can be uh, many other processes which can be used to make the different kind of products and due to which the all the flowers they can be diversified into different products and diversification as you know it will help in attracting the customer as well as for uh, getting the maximum benefits so what we can do with the value addition that we can properly utilize the ornamentals either in the fresh forms or in the dried form or processed form so value addition it start from the fresh flower and it can go to the to the processing okay so we'll take the raw material we'll try to add the value uh, by either uh, using it as such as a flower only or we process it to get the final product so if we talk about the global status of floriculture already dr prasad has covered uh, it in a big elaborated way that if you talk about the global market share of the world's largest cut flower exporter so we know that netherland is the biggest exporter with a 52% uh, share and followed by colombia ecuador kenya belgium and then if we talk about the global floriculture market uh, so we can see that the uh, by the end of 2017 the maximum cagr means cumulative agriculture growth rate was 5% and in which the minimum use of flower was for personal purposes then uh, followed by conference and activities and maximum flowers were used for gifting purposes and total um, share uh, total share was 33054 us million dollars and if we uh, talk about the status of floriculture in india we all know that mostly in india we uh, uh, grow the traditional flower or loose flowers and uh, also um, uh, grow the cut flowers and the areas of uh, the states uh, where the maximum floriculture occurs is maharashtra karnataka andhra pradesh haryana tamil nadu rajasthan west bengal these are the major producer producing center and the area under cultivation is 324000 hectares and total production is uh, 19.2 lakh metric ton of loose flowers and 8.23 lakh metric ton of cut flowers if we talk about india's position as an exporting country india ranks 29 as an exporter and having a percent share of 0.4% and uh, as a importer its rank is 59 and uh, percent share in market is 0.12%
So this is if we see the area introduction in last two decades. In 2001-2 the area was 1 lakh hectare which has increased to 3.39 lakh hectare in 2018-19 and production has increased from 5 lakh uh, metric ton to 19.91 lakh metric ton. It means there was increase in th area, 3 times increase in the area and production has increased to the uh, 4 folds. So if we talk about the value addition, value addition it is a process in which we uh, make the, uh, we prepare a product uh, which will be fetching the higher price in the market and how we, we will uh, add the value by either by the processing, by packaging or by upgrading the quality. Value addition means it is a manufacturing of process that increases the value of primary commodities and increasing the economic value of commodity through particular production process. For example, organic produce through regionally branded products or through making essential oils or by making um, uh, incense sticks, etc. Then profit potential is increased when a raw commodity is converted into unique products. See, Anybody is ready to pay more price to us when he gets something unique in the market. If you get something unique, then definitely you will get the more price in the market. And the consumer is also ready to pay more for the different kind of products. So why? What is the need of value addition? See, value addition is required to stabilize the farm income. Income. Then, in case of glut also, in some time in market there is glut is there to avoid that glut also we can make the different value added products. Moreover, for such uh, uh, natural calamities like COVID-19 uh, pandemic situation also, uh, this uh, value addition is a viable alternative where we can think of making the product processed products or the dry flower products for making uh, dry flower products so that the farmers can get the better price then to reduce the post, post harvest losses as we all know there are around 30 to 40 percent post harvest 30 to 40 percent post harvest losses occurs in um, flowers because of their perishable nature so this value addition it helps in reducing the It helps in creating the brand and provide a recognition to the product. Then value addition is an outlet for creativity. It helps in generation of employment and it provides the important aspects of marketing and giving the customers a reason to buy such products. Then what are the prerequisites we should keep in mind while uh, preparing the value added products? The first and foremost thing is novelty. Okay. We, every time we want something new and customer is very much ready to pay uh, the price for novelty. Then uniqueness, the product which we are preparing, it should be unique. It should not be the, uh, it should not be the regular kind of stuff. Then the product should be available. Then the product should be available and uh, whatever value added products we are preparing should have a um, market should be there or we have to create the products as per the requirement of the market and the value of these products should be definitely high as compared to the raw products and also should also have export potential so that if they are not utilized in domestic market at least we can export these products. If 
will talk about the global scenario of the value addition. So, uh, this diversification, quality enhancement and value addition, they are the keywords to success in floriculture trade at international level because now the people are not interested only in the cut flower or in specialty flower or loose flower but besides these things, they want something which is new, which is very innovative, which has some uh, good quality and a good brand which has a recognition. So, newer product development and marketing of ready-to-consume products through value addition is in great demand. The world production of essential oil is growing at more than 10% annually and at present it is estimated about 11,000 tons. So, it means if we have the flowers, so more than flowers, the preparation of essential oil will uh, yield into more profit and uh, will have the more market at the international level. See, if we talk about the uh, export of the floriculture, then Europe is the largest destination for India's floriculture products. And uh, if we talk about this uh, um, dry flower products, then the biggest exporter of dry flowers is Australia. And leading dry flower product importing country is UK. And uh, from India, the potential of these uh, dry, flower, uh, dry flower and flower product is around 100 crore rupees per year. It means there is a good scope uh, of these uh, value added products in the market. Coming to the Indian scenario, the Indian floriculture industry has composed of comprises the floriculture trade like nursery plant, potted plants, bulbs, seed production dry flowers, dry foliage, and then essential oil extraction. India is the fifth largest exporter of dried flower and second largest exporter of dried foliage in the world, accounting for 7% of world's export in dry flowers and foliage. And the main export market are USA, Netherlands, UK, and Germany. India is the largest exporter of jasmine oil in the world which accounts for more than 40% of total world exports in jasmine oil. And then we export large quantity of dry flowers and plants of around uh, value around uh, 100 crores of rupees per annum. And export of value added products, for example, essential oils, they can help in generating substantial revenue in international market rather than the uh, raw material that is rose petals or jasmine flowers or tuberose flowers so it is better to um, extract the oil and send it to into the market so it will reduce the volume and also increase the cost of the product so how we can add value to our product we can process the raw material as we already told you that we can make many of the products like uh, essential oils, gulrogan, then floral tea, trees, floral teas, etc. Then what we can do, we can pre-cut, wrap and package the commodities. Then we can label the product because uh, labeling means we will uh, make the beautiful packaging and we will label the product. So that is, the, uh, this is the way we can create the brand and this brand will help us in uh, getting the uh, good quality product. So, it will increase the appearance also which will attract the consumer. So, consumer will have a reason to buy such kind of product. And it uh, this uh, by increasing the shelf life also or waste life, we can add value to our product. If our, the waste life is more or the shelf life is more, means people will be ready to purchase those kind of uh, flowers or those kind of uh, arrangements or products then it can provide different recipes recipes means it will provide different methodologies or technologies excuse me please uh, it will provide different uh, techniques or methodologies for making new kind of products like uh, gift baskets or providing multi packs and there is uh, one important thing is that by this uh, making a brand or uh, making a uh, by this uh, packaging and labeling and all those things 
we can make a reputation in market and also we can build a relationship with the customer and by customer by seeing our label, label or uh, by our brand uh, customer will recognize the uh, company or the produ uh, producer and will purchase the uh, commodities so these are the ways we can increase the value to the product then what are the different avenues of uh, value addition so there are different areas uh, of value addition it includes the use of fresh flowers dry flowers or the product processed products in fresh flowers we can make the fresh flower arrangements then we can uh, uh, may extract the uh, pigments and dyes from the plants and then the flowers can be used as edible flowers as already i have told that we can prepare the floral teas then the as preparation of essential oils then drying of flowers we can dry the flowers and make different value added products and then uh, the plant pigments or dyes they can be used uh, for tinting of flowers means the flowers which are white in color they can be uh, uh, colored using the natural pigments to get the different shades in the same flowers which is not available so uh, Uh, so, um, uh, coming to the fresh uh, products from uh, uh, fr fresh uh, value added products from fresh flowers. So, these include fresh flower arrangements, uh, then bouquets and garlands. So, I think uh, Dr. Alka will be talking about these fresh flower arrangements and bouquets and garlands. So, I will be just uh, telling you that for what purposes these can be used these can be used uh, these arrangements can be used for occasions like birthday new year celebrations uh, marriage anniversary weddings etc and uh, there can be a two type of arrangements that is eastern or japanese style and western or english style of uh, uh, flower arrangement then bouquets bouquets can be used in any occasion they can be uh, the big bouquets uh, they can be arranged for the decor home decor or public building or they may be uh, handheld garlands and then the garland in which you can see there are of uh, different type that is first one you can see it is a horizontal shape then circular shape s shape then it is a fan shape of uh, arrangement then this is a crescent shape of uh, arrangement and triangular shape of arrangement so these are english style of flower arrangements and then this one is eastern or japanese style of uh, flower arrangement these are known as moribana Morimono, Nijere, Jenica, Jubana, and Jenny Jibana. In Western and uh, Eastern arrangement of flowers uh, uh, arrangement, there is uh, uh, only one difference that in Western style of flower arrangement, there is uh, use of large number of uh, cut flowers, whereas in uh, Japanese style of flower arrangement, the uh, minimum number of flowers are used, as you can see in this slide. Then these are the different floral garlands which can be prepared by using different kind of flowers maybe the jasmines and the roses and uh, different kind of roses and gar uh, this uh, marigold 
which is commonly used and these are the bouquets handheld bouquets uh, made up of roses and then tulips then besides this we can prepare a wreath buttonhole or corsets wreath wreath is nothing it is a band of flowers or foliage uh, made into a ring especially used on a some graves or uh, memorials or it can be used as a is uh, 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 it can be wear on a head as a tiara or uh, as a garland as a mark of honor then there comes pomanders pomanders is a bouquet which is in a, um, this ball shape of uh, bouquet is known as pomander so these are usually carried by a ribbon and so that they can be hang from the bride's wrist then buttonhole or buttonier these are small flowers or bunch of flowers woven on the hand uh, worn in a buttonhole this you can see it can be put on a buttonhole or in a lapel of the coat or jacket then corsage corsage is a little bit uh, elaborated arrangement of flower than buttonhole but it is similar to buttonhole but it can be uh, typically it is worn by women on special occasion uh like you can see in this picture that uh, it is worn by a lady on its hand uh, like an ornament then these are the different exam uh, photos of wreath corsage then these are the pomanders of uh, lotus and then roses and this is buttonier or buttonhole then dry flower arrangements see these those what i have talked about is fresh flower arrangement now uh, the flowers can be dried and they can be used to make different kind of products like dry flower basket then dried flowers bouquets similar to fresh flower bouquets then they can be used for making different kind of uh, paper weights or you, this different kind of displays then sachets or potpourris and for making candles then uh, greeting cards wall hanging there can be number of products which can be made from dry flowers so we can classify the dry flower arrangement into main blooms fillers liners and exotic if we talk about main bloom then all the flowers which are having the uh, big bloom like rose carnation chrysanthemums stratus they can be used as a main bloom then we have we need the fillers fillers we need for fresh uh, fresh flower arrangement as well as for dry flower arrangement in asparagus fern agrocelia etc they can use as a fillers and then there are liners see many of the grass species like uh, canary grass or ornamental wheat oat and then uh, legurus brumus these are the kind of grasses which can be uh, dyed Uh, with the natural dyes and can be used as a liner then besides this there can be different exotic uh, uh, products like lotus head palm spears and okra pods they can also be used for making this uh, dry flower arrangements so if we talk about the pot puris pot puris these are naturally scented room freshener Uh, and these are the major segment of dry flower industry and this is the most exported commodity from our country and the dry flower industry valued around 55 crores of rupees uh, pot puris we export every year okay so it is made up of dry flowers and herbs that are occurring naturally or they can be artificially scented <coughs> to freshen a room with the we can use uh, here essential oils Uh, can be used as the uh, one of the ingredients of these um, pot puris and these uh, pot puris should have subtle natural scent of all natural ingredients dried flowers leaves seed root bark woods resins and spices and uh, mostly what are the flowers which we use for making these pot puris are rose petals gomphrena marigold petals lotus pods these are uh, and uh, this your uh, citrus fruits also uh, bell fruit also these are the um, uh, things which we use uh, generally for preparing these uh, pot puris 
Besides this, uh, we can uh, preserve the foliage by using glycerin uh, for making different value added products. So here we dip the flower, uh, dip the either flower or foliage in mixture of glycerin and warm water solution. Either uh, it can be done by two methods. It is either by uptake method or by dipping method. And we dip the these uh, leaves mostly in 20% of glycerin solution for for dehydration of asparagus, ferns, silver oaks, etc. for seven to eight days till this, this uh, foliage starts coloring, uh, changing its color. Then these uh, uh, flowers can be used for making petal embedded papers. They can be incorporated into these the process of making paper that is recycled paper or by making handmade paper for so we can uh, use the petals here. Then petals can be used for making uh, candle making. So dry flowers uh, once we dry the flowers by press drying method they can be used for uh, making the candle for decorating the candles and uh, for fetching the better price in the market. Then uh, these uh, flower petals and the uh, especially the fragrant flowers they are used for making the bathing and other body care products like uh, moisturizers, lotions, uh, even uh, shampoos, toners, masks and uh, many more. So you see this is what we can prepare the floral jewelry also. We can prepare the floral jewelry with fresh flowers also and uh, with the uh, dry flowers also. So this is also one kind of value addition. If we prepare the uh, this uh, mostly in case of marriages and all the fresh flower jewelry is used uh, which is according to the theme of the wedding or according to the matching to the dresses the kind of flowers are used for making the garlands for making uh, the veni, gajra and uh, earrings and all those things and similarly the flowers and leaves can be dried and they can be embedded into the resin for making uh, different uh, value added products and different kind of uh, jewelry see here you can see the different lockets uh, which are uh, made up of uh, dry flower and uh, the dry flowers are embedded in resins See now, the another uh, important uh, avenue of this uh, value addition is essential oils. Okay, so these essential oils, these are highly concentrated volatile compounds, and these are present in the petals of the flower. They can be present in the leaves of the flower also, and even in the bark also. And these essential oils are extensively used in perfumes, flavors, soap, cosmetics toiletry, agarbattis, etc. And uh, mostly these essential oils, they can be used in uh, fragrances. They are used in uh, aromatherapies. They are used in drugs and for food uh, flavoring agent also. So these are the different uh, parts of the essential oils, different parts of the plants which are used for making essential oils. For example, flowers, rose, jasmine, carnation, then rosemary, lavender, all the flowers are used for making the essential oil. Then the leaves in the stem of geranium, pecholi, verbena and cinnamon, they are used for making these essential oils. Then leaves of mentha, then tulsi, lemongrass, palmarosa, etc. They are used for uh, preparing this essential oil. So different, all the different parts, leaves, stem, bark, wood, roots, even the gum or oleo resins, uh, seeds, fruits, they all are used for extracting the essential oils. And these are a very high value uh, commodity, which is prepared from the uh, ornamental crops. So these are different type of constituents of essential oil, aldehyde, alcohols, esters, ketones, oxide, phenols, hydrocarbons and terpenes which are um, obtained from the flowers and uh, ketones for example the ketones are um, obtained from camphor, carmine, menthol, 
etc. Then alcohols, geraniol, citronolol, methanol, linalol. So there are different methods of um, oil extraction that includes steam distillation in which simply we put the plant material in a container where we supply the steam and this the will uh, the this essential oil will evaporate and will pass through a coil where the cold water is um, pour over the condenser and the droplets of this essential oil will be separated uh, contain uh, it will be separated by using a separator and then another method is solvent extraction method in which we along with the plant material we use the solvent like hexane or ethanol to um, extract the this uh, oil as well as the wax and concrete to prepare the uh, this mostly this solvent extraction method is used for preparation of absolute which is finally going to use in the um, perfumes and then water distillation uh, water distillation is used for extracting the uh, oil from rose, orange flower, etc. Then another method is also there cold press extraction for uh, citrus peels. So these are the different methods which are used for extracting the essential oils. Then essential oils, these are a very important role in aromatherapy. The aromatherapy means uh, it is the use of these fragrances to uh, to make the person to treat uh, some of the disease or disorder and to make the person healthy and happy. It is a natural treatment which uses the concentrated essential oil for plants, plants in association with massage, friction, inhalation, compresses and baths. And it is a natural way of healing person's mind, body and soul. It can be used uh, for uh, as an inhaler, it can be used, it can be used uh, for uh, as a head oil, hair oil massage and uh, can be used for uh, even for preparation of uh, some uh, teas and all which is uh, which will be help in curing the diseased person. So there are different type of uh, therapies, psychotherapy, here the essential oil is used to stimulate or relax the brain and uh, especially the lavender and all such kind of oils are used for this purpose. Then therapeutic aromatherapy, here the essential oil used to treat the medical condition especially as a uh, for massage if we use it for massaging like uh, uh, some hot oils if we use then it is uh, known as therapeutic aromatherapy and then aesthetic aromatherapy it means we are preparing the different type of uh, products from these essential oil for uh, especially the beauty products made for hair as well as for skin care then these are the cosmetic products uh, which are prepared from the flowers like you can see here calendula moisturizing lotion rose creams anti-aging creams then calendula moisturizing cream then conditioners uh, there is another use of uh, these uh, flowers they can be uh, used as a edible flowers and uh, some of the flowers they can be eaten as a whole also some can be dried and they can be given to the poultry for example the marigold and calendula the, if the flowers of marigold and pet, uh, calendula are dried and feed to the poultry in poultry feed, then it will provide a um, very dark, intense uh, yolk color uh, as well to the eggs as well as uh, to the skin of the broiler, which is uh, very good for the health as it contains lots of xanthophylls and carotenoids. And then uh, fruits of roses, uh, which is known as rose hip. It is a rich source of vitamin C. So vitamin C can be obtained from this um, uh, rose hips. Then daisies and chrysanthemums. These are you can be used for uh, natural pigments. And uh, besides this many uh, flowers or florets, they are used for preparing the natural tea, tea which is the brain stimulator or enhancer. 
then this edible florets mint leaves are edible then day lily uh, bud and uh, flowers are edible then lilac the whole flower is edible nasturtium whole flower we can eat then pansy also so there are so many flowers which can be the whole flower can be utilized uh, for eating purpose or for edible purpose now these are the few examples of the flowers which can be used in different uh, diseases and then can be used in different preparations uh, and what are the different parts uh, of uh, these flowers which can be uh, taken by the or consumed by the uh, end user so if you talk about chrysanthemum the florets can be used for preparation of tea the calendula the petals are used for making soup butter stew or tea then tripulum majus or what we call as garden astrachium it is used for preparing vinegar then pansies are used for making salads garnishes etc so these are the few products of rose gulkand then uh, tea from hibiscus then uh, syrup uh, wild hibiscus syrup then the basil flowers can be eaten in pasta then lavender flowers can be used with chocolate cake then chrysanthemum tea calendula it can be eaten as a whole then chamomilla is used for making the floral tea these are the different floral teas rose tea chrysanthemum tea hibiscus magnolia honeysuckle lavender lily chamomile lemongrass so these trees can be made uh, individually from the each flower or they can be combination also as we can see lemongrass marigold tree so these um, floral teas can also be prepared from the flowers if the flowers are not being used for any other purpose so these flowers can be dried their florets can be dried and can be processed into making the um, this um, floral teas then what are the different uh, uh, any other uh, options that is the use of plant pigments or dyes so here the major thing is that we always talk about the novelty that something which is new that will be liked by the consumer so which will be the more preferable to the consumer and these uh, dyes or pigments they protect the plants against uv light and pathogen these uh, natural these uh, pigments which are present in the flower they are help for the helpful for the seed dispersal and these are signal molecule in symbiotic plant microbe interactions also and they can be used in pharmaceuticals and nutraceutical industries so these are the different uh, pigments which are present in the plants that are water soluble pigments and uh, fat soluble pigment water solubles are anthocyanin pelargonidin cyanidin delphinidin pentunidin malvidin and uh, these all are mostly present in roses delphiniums and then uh, peonies then besides these uh, anthocyanin there are chalcones orones flavones <clears throat> so all these pigments are available in the flowers these pigments can be extracted even the natural dyes can be extracted which will be which can be used in different uh, making different uh, products uh, for uh, making uh, for using as a natural dye even in the Uh, food product as well as for dyeing the uh, dyeing the textile or the wool so you see here, here you can see what are the floral dye sources these are african marigold it will provide yellow color african tulip will provide red color which is known as african tulip which is known as pathodica campanulata botanically it is known as pathodica campanulata then bottle brush calistemon it will provi provide purple color of dye which can be used for uh, coloring the cotton uh, cloth then pink hollyhocks hollyhocks eldia rosea it is uh, the dye obtain is green in color and then saffron night flowering jasmine that is nicanthus arbutus clitoria butia these all are the different flowers from which we can obtain the dye and we can use this dye in dyeing the um, cotton as well as wool 
uh, fabric as well as uh, wool textile so these are the different products uh, which can be used for uh, which can be prepared from this natural dye that is the cosmetic lipstick then ice creams cakes and then wool and even for that matter leather then flowers uh, these uh, the ornamental flowers have a potential of uh, curing some of the diseases and uh, they have the pharmaceutical and uh, nutraceutical uh, compounds there are different pharmaceutical and nutraceutical compounds which are obtained from these flowers so the pharmaceutical compounds which are obtained from flowers are catherinthine vincristine which is obtained from the catherinthus roseus and it is used for uh, treating the cancer patients and similarly vitamin c is isolated from rose fruits which is known as rose hips and they can be used for treating the uh, scurvy disease and also for uh, providing the immunity to the system to fight against many diseases then there are different nutraceutical compounds like lutein and zeaxanthin number of carotenes and carotenoids are used uh, for controlling free radical generation these are effective in preventing the free radical generation preventing free oxidation damage associated with cancer coronary heart disease cataract and age related macular degenerations so these uh, lutein tablets are available which is very good for the uh, eye uh, eyes eye health then these are the different uh, value added product of roses these are perfumes marmalades vitamin c tablets rose oil gulkand rose tea rose syrup rose jam rose champagne rose wine etc then calendula different kind of oils then uh, shampoos creams and uh, moisturizers then these are the value added product of jasmine the jasmine uh, is used mostly for making different kind of uh, hair adornments garlands strings as well as for, uh, for the jasmine oil then if we talk about the value uh, work done at iri so at iri we have uh, done the value addition by preparing different uh, many dried flower products and we have provided the trainings to the farmer farm women of uh, many villages of delhi and ncr regions and uh, by either through iri or uh, uh, with the help of uh, dst and we have also conducted the trainings for the teachers and the faculty who can uh, further uh, and this uh, this horticulture staff who can provide the training to the uh, different level so that it can reach to the uh, to the village level or to the farm women so this here you can see the different training programs being conducted and then demonstration and uh, visit to the lab you can see the people people uh, the trainees are preparing the products and this is the last final product what they have prepared then we have also commercialized uh, the dry flower technology with uh, mrs poonam kamra and who has established a company of floral images and uh, this uh, entrepreneur she was connected with the already trained farm women of different villages to which we have already um, given the training and we have provided the training so that they can prepare the value added products and now she is preparing a wide range of products and uh, she is a partner of IRI and she is participating in many events like flower show, kisan mela and uh, world trade fair and many uh, more other exhibitions etc. This, so this is the company floral images where she is preparing different kind of products. She is Mrs. Poonam Kamra. She is uh, she is uh, holding up many exhibitions, uh, being a part of exhibitions at many forums. Then uh, IRI has also conducted the training program. Uh, with uh, people uh, living in the slum area of uh, Ghazipur. Uh, these are the rag pickers, actually the rag picker people. And uh, with the help of ILFS, a uh, small NGO, they have started a small NGO named Gulmeher, where they have we have trained for uh, these uh, NGO people for making the value-added product. 
and now these uh, people are preparing uh, many good products and selling them online uh, with a uh, on a website named gulmohar.co.in so these are the products you can see here these are available online and this Gulmohar is the company which is selling these products online and uh, besides this uh, now there are many startup companies have come uh, which are uh, making different value added products so see here the people are recycling the flowers from the temples and they are making uh, this uh, either incense sticks or uh, dhup or uh, even the floral leather also so this is a company named fool this was started by in 2017 by mr ankit agarwal from kanpur they have collected the waste from different temples and mosques in UP and uh, recycle them to make the product full and uh, it was funded by IIT Kanpur so this is what they are taking the product from the different temples collecting them at one place then drying the flowers processing it and then after processing they are making the uh, products like the first part is incense sticks then they are whatever the flower which can be used for uh, drying and making incense sticks that will be used for making incense stick and then second part is they are making the vermicompost the flowers which are not utilized for making this product they can be used for uh, making the compost which is uh, further it will be added to the soil to improve the productivity and then they also uses uh, making the flora foam the dried petal they are molded with natural fungi to make this flora foam and also they have started making the leather also which is known as fleather so, so these are the new initiatives they have been started by the people in this uh, direction of value addition so these see, this is you can see the flora foam which is prepared by the company fool it is 100 percent biodegradable and it is it can be customized to any shape size and strength depending on usability and it is uh, superiorly functional uh, more functional than traditional thermocol and it is the most important thing is that it is biodegradable so they like that there are uh, many other products these companies are preparing you see this is what they are trying to prepare a vegan leather which will be eco-friendly and uh, it will be uh, used to waste uh, solve the waste problem utilization of waste and especially the Ganga's floral waste problem. So this texture, leather is texture is also resemb resembles to that of leather in appearance, elasticity and tensile strength. So this leather can be used for making different products like uh, belts and uh, jackets and uh, purses and bags etc. so like this uh, full company there are many other ngos which are working throughout the country this is sangeeta baldev and radhika tapadia from karnataka they have also started making different uh, products from the roses that rose syrup which is come with the name of gulabu then gulab jal gulkand so like that essential oil of uh, rose so different kind of uh, things have been prepared by the uh, many NGOs are coming up and many uh, new self-help groups are coming up. They are starting this, uh, they are opting this value addition and they are preparing the products. So, which can be, uh, which can be used to avoid the losses, which is otherwise uh, a farmer is, um, farmer is tolerating those losses. So, it is a very good opportunity for the farmer to engage the people as well as to pro provide a new product to the market even in case the there is no direct requirement of flowers in the market so that's all about this value addition thank you very much Thank you so much, madam.
thank you sir uh, thank you so much madam for uh, very uh, means uh, elaborative lecture you have delivered uh, before this uh, these participants so no doubt your work is uh, known uh, across the nation and we know uh, your bio data and your name in the name of belu edition and uh, we know uh, at iri you have developed this established this very important this uh, belu edition lab uh, so it is a very cell I mean, it's a attraction point in the I, division of floriculture and landscaping iri so it was our uh, we were fortunate enough uh, to have a lecture from you so madam once again i express my sincere thanks and gratitude to you on behalf of the department of floriculture landscape architecture college of horticulture banda university of agriculture and technology uh, for accepting request and giving your valuable time uh, and uh, sharing your experience whatever uh, this in, uh, research work you are doing and uh, whatever uh, this ngos and other things you have stated and uh, you have uh, shared before us so thank you so much ma'am thank you so much now next speaker uh, dr bharti kashyap associate professor department of floriculture landscaping uh, university of horticulture and forestry solan madam bharti is here madam you are connected dr bharti madam you are connected yes sir yes sir हाँ जी जी थैंक यू मैम सो ऑडियंस वी हैव अ सेकेंड स्पीकर डॉक्टर भारती कश्यप सी स्टेट प्रोफेसर एट डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ हॉर्टिकल्चर लैंडस्केप आर्किटेक्चर कॉलेज ऑफ हॉर्टिकल्चर एट डॉक्टर वाई एस परमार यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ हॉर्टिकल्चर एंड फॉरेस्ट्री सोलन मैडम इज वेरी वेल नोन इन द यूनिवर्सिटी रिगार्डिंग दिस ड्राइंग ऑफ फ्लावर्स and uh, various lectures were also attended in online and uh, a lot of uh, means uh, suggestions are also taken from madam uh, to develop well edition lab at our university also uh, so she is phd horticulture floriculture and landscaping and uh, university merit scholarship in bsc msc and phd in horticulture and certificate of honor in bsc horticulture she is gold medalist in first position in phd horticulture and uh, she awarded with the gold medal for bsc and phd horticulture himothkars and she joined as student professor in the department of floriculture landscape architecture dr y s parmar university of horticulture and forestry in the year 2009 and she is actively engaged in the teaching research and extension activities for the last 12 years and she published more than 40 research papers in the journals of national and international repute and four books she is better known at the national level for the unique work on drying of flowers in value addition she has established a floral craft lab in the department of floriculture and landscape architecture which is a source of attraction to university visitors farmers students and dignitaries she has handled five research projects on dry flowers as pi and five others as co pi she is working under icrp floriculture since 2012 She is associated with the breeding work in Aristomeria and Chrysanthemum at uh, University uh, Bias Parmar University of Horticulture and Forestry, uh, Solan. So, uh, dear uh, participants, this is very important lecture regarding a uh, drying of ornamentals uh, because we we cannot uh, save the uh, save the flower being a perishable nature if we dry it in be in a smart way uh, through. Uh, micro uh, and then uh, hot air oven micro oven other things so that the the life of the flowers can be extended and we can decorate it so this very this is very important lecture so may i call upon uh, to dr bharti kashyap madam uh, for sharing uh, your screen and lecture please ma'am uh, good morning dr tomar other scientist of uh, uh, india who have joined from various institutes and my dear students so um, i will be concentrating on my lecture on dry flowers dr ritu jain has given a very good lecture on value addition but i will be more concentrating towards the in an important lecture on dry flowers today so i would like to share my screen uh, is it visible now sir
विल बट यू स्लाइड शो में लगाई है मैडम इसको ना अभी स्लाइड शो में नहीं है Yes, yes. Now it okay, is okay, okay. yes, yes. You are audible and visible uh, slide also, Madam. Thank Go you, ahead. sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. So uh, we all know that fresh flowers are having very uh, small, very less waste life. So we have to preserve them by some of the means. So dry flowers is, is one of the means. Dry flowers are imperishable, perpetual, everlasting, and eco-friendly products, which are just like the fresh ones. they are not the season bound and there is less problem of their marketing the crop residues uh, of agriculture waste can also be converted into various type of value added products uh, as we have seen in the last two years during covid pandemic that many of the farmers were suffering because a lot of farm produce from floriculture especially was not sold in the market because of um, uh, stoppage of social uh, functions marriages and others so that excess product or farm product can be converted into uh, useful valuable products through dry flowers so this uh, dry flower industry is therefore a source of income generation to women unemployed youth and especially the disabled persons also uh if we see the data of dried flowers for the last 20 to 25 years we will come to know that dry flowers are contributing more than 70% to the total floricultural export from india but still i will say that still this sector is not has not been given so importance i um, i uh, usually share this technology with all the people uh, through trainings programs and other lectures i want that there should be a dry flower lab or floral craft lab in every uh, uh, agricultural university so that this technology can be transmitted to uh, disseminated to the end users or the farmers or the farm women so this uh, concept is very good for uh, use of uh, uh, our farm produce so if we see the scenario of india there are more than 50 companies which are uh, operating in dry flowers and these are basically located in kolkata tamil nadu and mumbai basically the uh, the sea ports which are close to sea so ramesh uh, flower tutti koran is the major um, key holder who is uh, sharing more than 50% share of total dry flower exports from india apart from it there are some of the other companies for example bac international kolkata shikha tamil nadu and singhvi international who are also dealing with the dry flower in general we say dry flowers but it is not only the flower any part of the plant either it is stem bark husk can be converted into a useful valuable product but it is only the your eye aap kaise usko aap aur cheez ko dekhte ho kaise usse aap valuable product bana sakte ho so in general we are working for the last 12 years on the dry flowers and we are handling many of the ornamental crops agri horticulture crops as well as their waste and lot of native flora which can be converted into valuable products so first of all we will be concentrating on the commercial dry flower crops so first crop is helichrysum bracteatum it is a very good uh, cut flower crop a uh, very good flower crop for uh, drying of uh, flowers and this is uh, available in so many colors second is hydrangea it is basically a shrub and it is having a huge flowers and it can be this is the natural color of the flower you have to harvest the flowers only when the it has the flower color has faded in the field and at that time it will become turgid and you can later on dye it next is acroclinum roseum or rodenthe so this is a everlasting flower uh i will uh, uh, so sorry to share dr ritu jain please dr ritu jain uh, can you hear me dr tomar sir please ask her to stop her camera it is disturbing so next crop is uh, zero chrysum viscosum that is golden everlasting it is also a very good flower crop for drying but not as good as uh, halichrysum 
another uh, plant is Molucella levis. So it is a winter season annual basically, and it is uh, harvested when the, these calyx are sturdy. You can harvest these flowers, dry it in uh, inverted drying, and utilize just as these cut stems, or you can uh, uh, dry the individual uh, these uh, uh, calyx and use in pot curry and other flower arrangements. And uh, another crop is Ornithobillum tharsoids, that is chinchirinchi. It is a bulbous crop being grown in uh, uh, winter season and comes in uh, spring, and it is also a very good fl flower for drying. Another crop is Scabiosa. It is a very little known uh, uh, flower crop and it becomes perennial in our area and in general can be grown in winters. Uh, another crop is Gomfrina globosa. So it is a very good uh, dry flower crop, can be grown in summer. There are so many colors, pink, white, uh, magenta and red. But out of these, uh, white one is very good for drying because uh, means, uh, although magenta and pink are also good, but white one is very good because you can dye it by uh, making it in a, into a, any, any color. You can dye it. So uh, next crop is Limonium sinuatum or Statis. It is also a winter season crop and it is an excellent material for drying. And another crop is Silosia cristata. So the cox comb is also uh, grown in, in our area. It is grown in summer season. And uh, in the warmer areas of India, it is grown in winter season. So it can be used in various type of flower arrangements. We are also working on some of the grasses, which are basically grasses, but we are uh, use, utilizing them as uh, dry flowers. So this is one grass is Bromus rubens. All these three grasses, Bromus lagurus and Brisa, we grow them in uh, winter season in our field. So this is Bromus rubens. And this one is the natural grass, this is dried, and this one is the dyed one. Uh, next crop is Lagurus ovatus. It is a beautiful grass, also suitable for landscaping, and can also be utilized as a filler. So uh, also known as rabbit tail grass or bunny tail grass. So uh, this is natural grass, this is dried one, and by um, value addition or dyeing, you can convert it to, to a, any hue, any color. Uh, another grass is Brisa maxima. Now, this is known as quaking grass. Quaking means it shivers. When there is some wind, it, it will um, um, uh, quake. So this is, uh, and when the, uh, uh, this is the natural color, uh, natural in uh, uh, field. This one is the dyed one. All these are dyed one. And the back, this one, the natural color. Another crop is Cycus revoluta. So we are having uh, many palms in landscaping. I am not suggesting that we should uh, you utilize it as a whole for dry flowers. But uh, in general, when the palm is being grown, the lower leaves turn yellow. At that time, we can harvest them because in the field, they are of no use. We can uh, dry them in uh, some heavy herbarium uh, um, press and then utilize it in various type of floral arrangements. Uh, now we will come to some of the agricultural crops. So first one is uh, maize, zea maize. This is zea maize. So every part of zea maize is uh, useful for dry flower making. It's a stem, husk, uh, this, uh, silk, and the cobs. These are silk and the cobs. Every part of this maize can be utilized. It is only your creativity to which uh, product you can uh, make out of this. So these are, uh, this is natural color and these are the dyed one. Later I will be showing which type of products we can prepare from this uh, otherwise invaluable uh, material. Uh, another crop is Penicetum glaucum. This is Bajra, uh, although throughout India it is being cultivated as an edible crop. But in our area, uh, usually the um, seeds don't, um, uh, don't uh, the crop is not having good seeds. So we are only cultivating it for dry flower purposes. And the, in this way, the immature um, fl uh, flowers, immature spikes can also be converted into dry flower products. Another crop is sorghum bicus. 
is a very good material for dry flower making because uh, in our area, this crop is not grown for edible purposes. It is only of fodder crop. This, uh, and the flowers are wasted in the uh, field. So we can utilize these flowers for uh, making different type of bouquets, uh, flower arrangements, and many more. This material is so much uh, good for dry flower arrangement that uh, this material doesn't shatter, uh, does, uh, insects doesn't um, uh, destroy this. So it, and it can be handled very easily. It can be washed even after 10 or 20 years of use. So this one is the natural color and these are the dyed ones. Uh, another crop is Sisemum indicum, till. So uh, the uh, calyx of the till, after removing the seeds, can also be used as dry flower sticks or uh, uh, can be used in pot potpourris. Uh, next crop is linum. Uh, linum or ulci or flex. This is a very good crop for dry flower making also, although it is an edible crop for oil extraction, but uh, you will uh, get more money if you convert this into a dry flower product. So these are the uh, um, uh, berries or fruit of this ulci and it be, had been colored with the water, uh, this water soluble uh, paints. So it, it is an excellent specimen also. Uh, next uh, crop is triticum estimum, uh, gehu or wheat, on which the entire India depends of, for edible purposes. So I'm not saying that you convert an, an entire of the crop into a dry flower product. But in the field, there are some of the crops which have not set good seed and which are not utilized in the field can be converted into different type of dry flower sticks. Uh, this is rice. Immature rice panicles can also be utilized in flower arrangements. Uh, it is also an, uh, another agriculture crop, proso millet. And this one is another crop, Eleusine kurakana or finger millet. So it can also be utilized in dry flower arrangements. A uh, very important crop for uh, dry flower industry is cotton. You might be knowing that. These are the calyx of cotton and uh, in the form of potpourri. It is being utilized throughout India. But uh, th this, is, this uh, calyx is neither eaten by um, uh, animals, nor it is being destroyed and the burning is not allow allowed by the government. So this calyx is utilized in potpourri. You can find this type of material in your sofa set, wall hangings, and many things, pen stand, soap cases. But many of the people think, what is this? They don't know what is this. So these are the calyx of cotton. Uh, another crop is Lufa aegyptica. So outer this sponge of this uh, Lufa can be utilized in uh, dry flower making and making different dry flower sticks. Uh, now we come to native flora or wild ornamental plants. So in our area, different type of plant material can be there. And in other uh, regions of India, other SAU, you can have um, priority on your material. There can be different type of plant material. So I'm just concentrating on the material which are available in HP. So one plant is Anaphalis marigeritacea. This is the hardy. This is basically under flora of pine forest. And we are utilizing it for making different type of bouquets and flower arrangements. But main thing is that you have to harvest it in very early stage when it is in bud stage because it will open uh, even uh, you have harvested it. So another crop is Acer oblongum. Basically, this is a tree and it sets a huge amount of seed and the seeds are sometimes not viable. So such seeds are utilized uh, um, for making different type of flower sticks and potpourri, pomanders, etc. Uh, this is a crop of barleria. So calyx of this barleria can be used as dry flower sticks and make, uh, for utilizing the various type of craft work like greeting cards, wall pictures, etc. Uh, this is a silosia. We are having two types of strains of silosia. So this is basically all native all wild. So this white, uh, white is throughout India, available in, throughout India. We are cultivating this crop in uh, a huge field because we require this in much uh, amount and it is utilized in uh, flower arrangements and bouquets uh, and it is a summer crop for our area. Uh, apart from them, we are lucky enough that we are having so much diversities of uh, pines in Himachal Pradesh. So this one is Sidrus uh, Devadara. The uh, fallen uh, cones of this uh, are known as Cedar roses are also utilized in uh, dry flower industries. 
for making different dry flower sticks or packing some boxes, gift boxes, etc. And this is Pinus roxburghi. The immature uh, cones of this can be utilized, although uh, the mature cones can also be uh, utilized for making different products after separating them. And this is Picia smithiana. It is having very good cones. And this is Picia grega. Uh, this is Pinus gregae. We have utilized them for making different type of pine cone birds. Apart from them, there are some of the berry uh, bearing plants. For example, Viburnum, Unimus, Abrus precatorius, this is Ratti, and Pyracantha, which if we preserved with various technique can be utilized in different valuable product. Uh, this is Heteranepilensis, Wild Ivy, Esculus Indica, Rose Hips, Dioscoria. So these are some of the native plants. And apart from this, there are so many ferns in our valleys and forests. This one is Chilanthes albomarginata. This is a beautiful fern and is white from backside. Uh, it is also known as stamp fern. So it can be utilized in greeting cards. It is a very good specimen for press drying because I have found that after 20 to 30 years, it is not going to um, uh, fade. It is as, um, suitable, uh, as it was in fresh condition. Another plant is Polystichum squarosum. It is known as Pahadi Patti. It is a very good native fern, also utilized in cut greens. And you can see how leathery, how shiny your, uh, the leaves of this plant are. And these can also be utilized in dry flower arrangements and in press drying works. And another fern, very um, beautiful fern is Onychium contigua. It is a very fine leaved fern and can be utilized for making greeting cards and candles. Uh, and this is also a beautiful fern, Woodwardia unigumeta. And it is having red leaves at the time of emergence. So, it, and the red color of the leaf is uh, preserved even after drying. These are uh, some of the spikes of verbescum, wild tobacco. We call it as jungli tambaku. So these are, although this is a weed type of plant, Although I will not call any plant as weed because we are utilizing everything from the nature. So this is a plant from um, waste areas. The spikes of this can be utilized for dry flower making. And this is a wild helianthus and the seed head of this can be utilized for um, different craft works. Uh, Abutilon indicum. This is also a weed plant from uh, um, waste areas known as abutilone or atibala. Atibala means it is a very obnoxious weed. So if you can collect the seeds of this and utilize in various floral arrangement, it will be very marvelous. And this is Nikendra. It is also a, a weed throughout India. And the calyx of this and along with the fruit is uh, beautiful. This is Arvas Candens. It is also a plant like Gomfrina and the uh, flowers doesn't shatter. So it is also a good flower uh, material for fillers. Cotadiria uh, grass. Uh, this is a grass which is only found in temperate areas. So we call it as pampas grass. And this grass is very beautiful because we can wash it, we can handle it for many years and it remains just shiny like silk. So, but uh, this grass is rare, although a similar plant like saccharum is available throughout India. So you can also utilize that for dry flowers, but you have to harvest it at a very early stage. And another grass is Typha. It is available in um, marshy areas uh, throughout India. So you have to harvest the immature uh, uh, spikes of this and utilize in dry flower arrangements. Another plant for, uh, from our area is Orozylum indica. So basically this is a plant from the Gnoniaceae family and uh, the fruit is having seeds inside. So these are immature seeds and seeds can be utilized uh, in uh, Himachal Pradesh. These are utilized for adorning the Kinnori caps. These are the special traditional caps of Himachal Pradesh, but we can utilize these seeds in different dry flower arrangements and greeting cards. And another important plant is lotus. So lotus pods are available in on uh, many of the uh, swampy areas, uh, marshy areas throughout India in the warmer localities. And many of the lotus pods, millions of lotus pods are being exported from India every year. Uh, next plant is Carthemus. So this is the same Kesar or Kusum 
which is uh, nowadays in uh, news also because many of the people are utilizing this plant for adulteration in true kesar. So uh, flower birds of this plant can be utilized in dry flower making. And the last plant is rosa. So every part of rose, bud, flower, stem, hip, and thorns even can be utilized in dry flower making. I have shown so many crops. So in your area, there can be a different type of uh, crops on which you can work. And if these crops are brought into the market, they will hit the um, market because these type of material are not available in the market. So uh, now comes the different types of techniques of drying crops because um, Sir has provided me uh, very less time. This lecture will not be covered in half an hour, but I will try to uh, uh, cover every part. So uh, techniques of drying crops depends upon the type of material as well as the uh, end use to which you have to put. For example, if you want to uh, dry a fern for uh, greeting cards, you can dry by a press drying method. But if you want to dry the same uh, fern for a, a flower arrangement, uh, the, the material dried by press drying will not be enough. So you have to dry by the, that plant by another method that is glycerin drying. So I will be concentrating some of the methods. So first method is air drying. In air drying, you can make a simple hanger by tying the ropes on a hanger or on a um, uh, window. So you have to dry the material upside down. These are anaphylis being dried after dying in that hanger. Uh, air drying is not only drying on hanger, you can dry in pots also. These are the mage uh, uh, sheet being dried on blotting sheet. Means it doesn't mean that you have to dry only on the hanger. If the plant is material is not, not having stems, so you can dry them on the blotting sheet also. Next method is press drying. So this is the method which has been utilized by the botanist for so many years. So here you can see we are drying the mage sheet or makika chilka in, inside this. Now we, you will say why you are drying. Because if we make flowers and the dolls from mage sheet, you have to press it in a uniform manner. So next method is embedded drying. Embedded means you have to dry the material inside a desiccant. So we can use silica gel, borax, sand. We have worked on so many desiccants, but we have come to the conclusion that silica gel is the uh, um, very good for drying max, uh, many plant materials. So we are drying uh, roses in this method. Uh, in embedded drying, the plant material will take uh, almost 10 days for complete drying. But if you want to hasten the process, you can utilize microwave oven drying. So you have to utilize the same containers like uh, your plastic containers and uh, you, uh, you will embed the material in silica gel and then put inside the microwave drying, microwave oven. So this material will be uh, fully covered with the layer of silica gel, but at the time of pouring a silica gel inside these crevices or different shapes of roses, you have to cover whole of the flower because this is the, the final drying or final shape of the rose depend upon the uh, how you will pour silica gel. If you will bend this flower towards one side, that will be misshapen. So you have to cover whole of the these crevices of uh, rose inside with silica gel and the shape will be maintained. So this uh, uh, bowl will be uh, put in for drying in a, for two to three minutes inside the microwave. This time is known as microwave dr uh, drying. But uh, after this, when you will uh, remove this from microwave, the flower will not be dry. So you will dry that at a room temperature from 12 to 24 hours. You will allow this uh, plant material to settle. So this time is known as setting time. After two to three, three days, the roses will be completely dry. So you can see this is the microwave dried roses. But one thing I want to share, uh, share that these roses will be brittle. As brittle means only by touch, these will be broken. So 
So how to dry then roses? When microwave drying is so much uh, giving us so much fragile product, this product cannot be transported because it will, when it will touch the walls of that uh, your um, container or it will be broke, broken. So now we are technology, uh, we are concentrating on a new technology in which the flowers are dried in a, uh, this um, uh, solution of uh, alcohol and glycerin. So this, uh, at, in, by this technology, the plant look like lifelike. Means this will not be fragile. You can transport it to in any part of India as well as abroad. So from India, the these uh, the roses are being exported to Dubai markets. Another method is hot air oven drying. Actually, microwave oven drying preserves the color of the flowers. Hot air oven drying uh, in general does not because the temperature is high. But if you maintain the temperature from 30 to 40 degree temperature only inside the hot air oven, you can also preserve the color of the flowers. But in general, we are utilizing hot air ovens only for drying cones, bajra, mage sheet, and mage silk, and means the product which are um, not which can be dried in sun drying also means which don't need very delicate processes. So we. But if you have to dry the roses inside the hot air oven drying, so you have also to dry them in by embedding method. You can't just put the material inside the hot air oven and because that material will burn, that will be discolored. And if you want to um, put the material for press drying inside and hot, hot air oven, specialized presses are available in the market which can bear high temperature. And there are some of the iron presses also which you can um, place inside this hot air oven. Uh, another method of drying is skeletonization. Uh, in this method, uh, the leaves uh, are turned into skeletons, means only the vein network of the leaf is uh, remains and the whole of the chlorophyll is washed away. So how we do this, we can uh, uh, dip these leaves in a boiling solution of lye. Lye this means sodium hydroxide. So sodium hydroxide is used at the rate of 50 gram per liter and the leaves are placed inside that solution for five to 10 minutes, depending upon the plant material. So they, we have worked upon many leaves. So you can see this is uh, magnolia leaves uh, dried by this method. And you can utilize these leaves in various type of craft works, greeting cards, wall pictures, etc. There are some of the other leaves, Artocarpus, Ficus religiosa, Populus and magnolia. So these are some of the leaves which can make good skeleton specimens. Now, next comes the method of glycerinization. There is perf no perfect method for drying of foliages because press drying will make them only two dimensional. So we can dry the foliages and some of the flowers by glycerin drying. So what is this method? This method, based in this method, basically, the moisture which is inside the plant that is replaced by the glycerin uptake. So when glycerin will be imbibed by the plant, it will become elastic. It will not be mm, broken and it, the leaves will be turning shining also. So the, you can see the leaves of uh, this juniper, uh, leaves of buxus. So after drying, the leaves will turn yellow. This is no, uh, not a problem. You have to dye it again. So you can see the same leaf has been dyed and now this is as fresh as it was in its uh, natural stage. You can um, um, mold it into different shapes and utilize in various flower arrangements. So there, there are two methods of glycerin application. This first method is uh, by uptake method. So in this, uh, we are uh, drying the polystyrene fawn by uptake method. And second method is by dipping the entire plant. Dipping the entire leaf, you can dry in the uh, glycerin solution. Now comes the question, what should be the concentration of glycerin? So glycerin is used at the rate of 20 to 40%. In all the cases, depend on the studies also make that 20, for some of the plant material, 20% is better and for some 40% uh, is good. So it, you have to work out according to the your foliage. Now you can see, this is the utilization of glycerin dried leaf in this, uh, hanger. Next comes bleaching. Now question arises why there is a need of bleaching. 
in general our idea is to um, utilize the plant material which uh, as such is in available in the nature but sometimes some of the plant material is discolored due to some of the drying methods or drying methodology and sometimes some material is naturally blackened or dark brown which cannot absorb the dye color so we have to bleach that by bleaching so various type of oxidative bleaches and reductive bleaches are uh, utilized but in general we have found that sodium hypochlorite and calcium hypochlorite at the rate of 10 to 20% make good uh, bleached specimens you can see we have uh, worked on various pl uh, plant material uh, on 10 different plant material and these are photographs of some so you can see that these calcium and sodium hypochlorite make good uh, specimens now comes to dyeing in general we want to preserve the natural color of the flowers for making different valuable um, product but if the plant is not having good colors it is having only uh, white color then your floral arrangement will become monotonous how will you uh, uh, take uh, variability and uh, in that arrangement so you have to dye the specimen so when we worked on dry flowers uh, uh, 12 years back only these type of aerosol paints were available for dry flowers which are poisonous carcinogenic as well as the pollutant of environment also and very costly in, in by coloring only 10 uh, flower spikes this bottle will be finished so through this period we have come out with the very uh, different colors which have not previously been studied by anybody so we are having different type of fabric dyes which are good for dry flowers you can um, cite these references in many of my papers also so these are some of the colors we are utilizing fabric dyes indicator dyes like methylene blue rhodamine brilliant green and there are some of the um, food dyes also means these are uh, apple green um, uh, raspberry red Uh, this um, yellow dye also these but in general the food dyes don't retain color for very much long time in uh, fabric dyes and indicator dyes are good some of the people do not want chemical dyes on the dry flowers so they want the natural color so we have made a study in which different 15 plants were utilized and how that the color of that bio color was retained on this lagus uh, grass you can see so this is the color which we obtained after uh, dyeing uh, extracting the color from rose this is the color after uh, from uh, turmeric and this is marigold this is the color of beetroot so we have worked on different 15 species so you can this is work of one of my students who is now at pau and this was a very good work and we have come to some of the uh, bio colors which are good for dry flower making Uh, now we have covered floral uh, different type of dry flower methods now comes what type of products we can make from the dry flowers so in market many types of products are available but i will be more concentrating the product in at dr vyas parmar university so these calendars etc i will be showing them india they are same lotus pot shola flower eagle marmolos cones and palm spears the means they are having monotony so i will be showing our products from our in flower arrangements made from agricultural waste and wild grasses also so these are flower arrangements these are flower arrangements from mage sheath makki ka chilka na wo invaluable product jisko aap fank dete ho na kahi utilize nahi kar sakte you can make so much valuable sticks and flower arrangements from this uh, mage sheath uh, these are some of the flower arrangements from wild celosia so you can see how much colored these flower arrangements are and they can retain the color for 4 to 5 years these are also some of the arrangements if you preserve the um, flower arrangement in glass container they will survive more and uh, they will be valuable presentable for a long time so you can um, preserve them in different type of glass just jars 
these juice glasses, small candle stands, and these are beautiful glasses. Uh, next plant, uh, these are potpourries. This is the potpourri of cotton. This is the same. These are potpourri of acroclinum and the potpourri of thuja. These are different native materials utilized in potpourri. And this, uh, some of the question, uh, person has asked what is sachet in the text box. Of, so this is sachet, means a pouch. These are some of the materials for potpourri. This is the mollusella, helichrysum. This is coelurotheria and this is acer. The second product is, uh, third product is uh, dry flower sticks. So you can see different type of materials, dioscoria, acer, that tambaku and bajra. These are, and this is silosia. These are utilized in dry flower sticks. So various sticks made from different type of pine cones, helichrysum, statis, uh, and then this is till. And these are dry flower sticks made by one of our startup, Miss Bimla Devi. And she is handling her own startup by the company name Everlasting. So she had made some, these sunflowers from made sheath. And this, these flower sticks are also from her work. This is a work from our, another person who was basically a trainee. And she are making so much beautiful uh, dry plastics from made sheet and selling in her own village. These are also from made sheet. And these are sticks from uh, khajur and pines, palms, sorry, palms. Actually at our farm, we don't throw anything, and, uh, which is waste, we br bring uh, it to our lab. So you can make uh, leave, uh, these type of sticks from uh, cycus palm and khajur and other things and this is from uh, coconut this is a plant stand made from old aqua card uh, candles so this is a beautiful uh, plant stand or um, uh, sample for dry flower um, uh, displaying dry flower products these are bouquets prepared from uh, our native grass uh, this is anaphylis this is our also native plant, Aster oblongum, and you can make beautiful pomanders. This is the wild helianthus, and you can make such a balls from Tithonia also. Uh, Rakhi um, made from dried flowers is a hit product of our university, and we have provided them a commercial touch, and these are available in this form now. And Every year we sell so many rakhis um, in our university from made from dried flowers. These are dried flower rakhis from agricultural waste. These are some of the products from cones. These are flower dolls from made sheath makika chilika. Uh, flower dolls made um, decorated with dried flowers. Some of the products from made sheath greeting cards from various products. Now, this is the same one I was talking about earlier, Chilanthus. These are some of the material from skeletonized leaves, uh, file covers, wall pictures, different type of wall pictures. Our students have put many of the efforts in make, uh, as well as our staff in making such uh, beautiful products. This. Uh, a uh, uh, wall picture is 12 years old. Bookmarks, floral wreath. Now floral wreath in generally is uh, used in uh, different type of grave ceremonies or other uh, death ceremonies, but floral wreath from dried flowers is basically a decoration product. So it is used to uh, decorate walls as well as your doors. These are mirrors also. These are also sold, from, uh, are being sold from our lab uh, at very high prices. These are uh, mirrors from agriculture waste. Hangers. Garland from dyed gomfrina. And this is garland from rose hips and some of the other ornaments. These are some of the products from our lab. Dry flower arrangements in glass containers. 
and this is our dry flower or floral craft lab and i invite all of you uh, if you can visit this lab there are more than 250 specimens which have been displayed to teach students and other entrepreneurs we also organize training programs for the farm women as well as the entrepreneurs these are some of the programs in villages also our students also take a lot of interest in these recreational activities this is one of our uh, startup uh, miss bimla devi as i have, i have talked about earlier she is selling her uh, flowers by the company everlasting and also uh, selling uh, through exhibitions also these are some of the news coverage these are visits of dignitaries in our lab and this is one of our technology on making of incense sticks from uh, roses roses and other flower waste from the temples as ritu jain ma'am has also shown one technology from kanpur so this is also a technology of mr ravinder prasher from pune district of himachal pradesh who was an incubator of dr vyas parmar university and he has Uh, set up his industry at una by the yuan vendors and is he, he is selling his um, incense sticks uh, through online mode as well as also exporting to various countries there are so many avenues in dry flower and related products you, as ritu jain ma'am ne bhi bataya hai so we can extract color from various type of flowers this is color from marigold flower this is color from rose flowers and we are definitely we are not sending any uh, them outside we are utilizing these bio colors on our dry flowers also and one another technology is uh, dr tomar has asked me ki uh, kon, who will cover herbal gulal so maine kaha ki thoda sa main kar dungi so we are also preparing herbal gulal from uh, 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 these flowers you can dry the flowers as well as you can extract the flower from uh, fresh flowers so in case of pandemic or uh, farm supplement jo aapka market mein flower bikta nahi hai usko aap is tarah ki technologies mein use kar sakte hain here we have extracted the color from various flowers roses marigold and we are making herbal gulal for holi uh, this year and uh, this is uh, our technology which was given by kalyani center for acrip centers and we are now working on this technology so we are utilizing various type of carriers especially arrowroot powder arrowroot powder is very good for making herbal gulal and when the technology is complete and for disseminating we will be disseminating this technology to all the farmers and other entrepreneurs so this is our contact number if anybody wants any uh, has any query he or she can contact is uh, on this number so with this uh, thing i want to close my lecture that in dry flower industry there are so many opportunities i have found an uh, that in, in calcutta i have seen the ladies who are not even studies first class they are not going not not have been to any school they are exporting so much of dry flower so why can't we do you know so this is an opportunity for all the agriculture university all the states that we can uh, promote this technology more thank you thank you very much thank you madam thank you so much madam uh, for uh, very very detailed presentation and very nice presentation which is very amazing uh, for uh, uh, watching this presentation and listening you so it is very eye opening for all of us uh, to work on this aspect uh, in our floriculture discipline this is a value addition of flowers is very much needed to uh, extendize the uh, various uh, techniques uh, to create a product and we should engage our students also and pg and phd students for doing research on this aspect so uh, this is a means we say start the startups many startups already elaborated by you and madam ritu jain in your presentation so it is a very new aspect eh? and so that we can engage the uh, means the youngsters and rural women also for uh, starting their uh, cottage scale level industry at their home so really madam uh, dr bharti kashyap madam uh, thank you so much for your presentation 
for preparing this very nice slides and uh, the varieties of the products you have presented when i was associated in anbira even during my student life so only greeting cards and three dimensional containers and four five types of um, uh, products uh, we have also uh, means learned to prepare during training period but uh, the lab you have shown the products you have shown it is very much amazing for all of us so thank you so much ma'am uh, from on behalf of, from the uh, banda university of agriculture and technology on my personal behalf department of floriculture and agriculture banda university we express our sincere thanks to you for uh, inviting me accepting our request and joining this uh, webinar and presenting this uh, very important uh, lecture to the participants thank you so much madam marti thank you sir thank you so dear participants next uh, speaker uh, dr r k srivastava uh, sir is from uh, cimef uh, srivastava sir you are connected yes yes uh, i am i am connected okay thank you sir so uh, most welcome sir uh, dear participants uh, uh, this lecture will be delivered on this topic the flowers uh, aroma technology and business prospects as we know uh, the value addition of ornamentals but uh, generally we classify three, three types of products first is a fresh valued product the second is a uh, processed valued product and third is a uh, and dry flower so dry flower products and overall view have been elaborated by the two speakers so third speaker is a very important speaker is a he is associated uh, working in a very renowned uh, means uh, pimp means premier institute of medicinal aromatic plants in the country that is a cimep at lucknow so dr shivastav sir will speak on that how many flowers like rose marigold and jasmine uh, aromatic plants can we we can extract the aroma uh, this essential oils and how this essential oil can be uh, sold in a business market so first i would like to cite the uh, very brief uh, profile dr about dr shivastava sir sir did his msc in botany from dr ram manohar lohia university fezawad in 1995 after his msc he joined central institute of medicine and aromatic plants Lucknow in 1996 as a junior research fellow and did his PhD on menthol mint production technology and popularization among the farmers of Uttar Pradesh. After completing his PhD from CMF, he joined Deepak Fertilizers and Petrochemical Corporation Limited, Pune, as deputy manager on 2000. Then Dr. Sivastava joined Fragrance and Flower Development Center (FFDC) Kannauj under Ministry of Micro Small Medium Enterprises, Government of India in 2002 as extension officer. Then. assistant director and served fbdc for 13 years presently he is working as a senior scientist and head rural, rural development csir cmap lucknow from 2016 now he is handling mega projects sponsored from dbt for development of bundelkhand region and also involved in csir aroma mission a nodal of northeastern region apart from these projects he was also responsible for technology for utilization of bio resources for making incense sticks and fragrant on he handled more than 20 projects worth for rupees 100 lakhs in the area of medicinal and aromatic plants so he is we was visited more than three countries and also appointed as resource person of indo project in egypt apart from ever he published one book 11 technical bulletins 72 research papers in national international journals book chapters and 30 papers presented national international seminar one us patent on aromatic and medicinal plants also granted so most welcome sir on behalf of this uh, department of floriculture landscape architecture banda university of agriculture technology banda i heartily welcome you sir for accepting our request and joining this uh, uh, national workshop as a key resource person and uh, though i uh, have a sorry also because i invited you in the last hours so this is a means uh, professionalism you, know, you have a uh, Uh, soon the scientific temperament immediately accepted my request so uh, sorry uh, uh, extremely uh, sorry sir i might i invite you in the last hours but you accepted uh, so so i express my thankful thanks to, to you sir uh, so may i call upon dr shivastava sir for uh, presenting his uh, uh, this lecture and presentation please sir go ahead namaskar uh, tomar sir uh thank you thank you very much for uh, giving me uh, this opportunity to uh, deliver my lecture so uh, i'm just my slide is visible
डॉक्टर तोमर स्लाइड इट इज शोइंग स्टार्टेड स्क्रीन शेयरिंग बट अभी स्टिल इट इज नॉट शोइंग सर ओके नाउ नो नो सर आई हैव जस्ट it's visible and uh, i i have uh, started the screens uh... actually sir here it is not visible okay 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 so i i will i will stop my sharing it again once again you shall see yeah yeah I... now it is visible sir Now it's clearly visible. Now it is visible, sir. It, now oh. you just slide show me. I put it, sir. Ah, it's done. Slide show me. Here, sir, I have put it. Actually, sides, sir. Left side, sir. There are other slides are also showing. In slide show, only one slide will be shown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in my computer, in my computer, it is uh, on uh, slide showing mode. Okay. ओके सर यू गो हाइट सर ओके ओके सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई वुड लाइक टू थैंक वीसी बांदा यूनिवर्सिटी फॉर गिविंग दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी एंड डॉक्टर तोमर एंड माय फ्रेंड प्रोफेसर एस बी द्विवेदी बिकॉज वी हैव वर्क टू थ्री प्रोग्राम इन बुंदेलखंड बिकॉज आई वाज कोऑर्डिनेटर इन बुंदेलखंड प्रोजेक्ट सो thank you dr tomar so um, today is my lecture uh, topic is flowers aroma technology and business prospects so our earlier speaker dr ritu jain and uh, dr bharti kashyap was uh, delivered on uh, the dry flower and the um, essential oil ayur they cover essential oil but uh, i am covering some business opportunities of our youngsters and startups and msmes and we have developed number of technologies because this institute is working especially working on uh, medicinal aromatic plant and uh, as a as a uh, post uh, i i worked in uh, fragrance and flavor development center for 13 years and i also did my phd in the aroma uh, industry aroma technology and developed one mint variety which is quite popular among the farmers that name is kosi so it's about uh, more than 90% area is now covered uh, by kosi variety so uh, the, this is uh, the institute uh, this is the front line research lab of csir dedicated to high quality research in the area of uh, biology chemical sciences of plants and extending technologies to the uh, industries and msm because uh, we are comes under council of scientific and industrial research so our research is the total applied research so what to sir hello yes so oh. actually no, sir, sir slide is not moving sir slide is not moving yes sir yes sir slide slides are not moving sir now no no only first slide is showing still sir oh okay okay but in my computer it's moving and uh, it, it is in slide show mode also so otherwise sir na you click uh, na second slides okay ha ah, dr sir inka slide moving nahi ho raha sir ka uh, shivastav sir ka सर माउस क्लिक से राइट right, वो राइट right क्लिक करेंगे ना तो उसे नेक्स्ट करके हो जाएगा दैट इज द वे आई हैव डन स्लाइड्स हमने पहले बना दिया है मैडम सर को दिस विल स्टॉप अदर स्क्रीन शेयरिंग डू यू वांट टू कंटिन्यू आ रहा है उसमें तो 
हाँ स्लाइड पे हमने शेयर स्क्रीन पे जा रहे हैं तो अभी अभी आ रहा है डॉक्टर साहब क्या पैनलिस्ट के लिए नहीं सर अभी आपकी फर्स्ट स्लाइड शो कर रही है क्या कह रहे हैं डॉक्टर साहब स्लाइड किस पे स्लाइड शो लेकिन फर्स्ट स्लाइड है उसके बाद सेकेंड स्लाइड नहीं आ रही है नेक्स्ट वहाँ उनकी आवाज आ रही है जैसे जैसे नहीं रीशेयरिंग करके बताएं क्या सर को रीशेयरिंग करें मैडम रितु आप क्या कह रहे हैं कैसे करना है मैडम सर मैं ये कह रही थी कि किया है ना स्लाइड शो करने के बाद नेक्स्ट आता है उसमें नेक्स्ट स्लाइड पे जाने के लिए ऑप्शन वो ऑप्शन प्रेस करेंगे तो चल जाएगा क्योंकि मैंने वैसे ही चलाया था हाँ नहीं चल रहा है मैडम मैंने मैं वही कर रहा हूँ लेकिन नहीं चल रहा है उस पर नहीं चल रहा है हमारे कीबोर्ड से चल रहा है ये जब हम माउस से कर रहे हैं नेक्स्ट स्लाइड तो नहीं चल रहा है सर आप रीशेयरिंग करिए एक बार सर रीशेयरिंग ओके ओके कीबोर्ड से नहीं चल रहा अभी नहीं अभी शेयर कर रहे हैं दोबारा आ गया तो अमर सर हमारे सर आ गया फर्स्ट स्लाइड तो आ गई ही है लेकिन अब कंटिन्यू आपका अब सर सेकंड वाले पे दबाइए सर उस पर सेकंड सेकंड स्लाइड पे आया सेकंड आ गई सर सर आ गई सेकंड स्लाइड अच्छा लेकिन उस पर स्लाइड शो मोड पे नहीं है अभी तो आप सर छोड़ दीजिए आप ऐसे जैसे जैसे आप स्लाइड चेंज करेंगे ना सर आप उस पर उसी पे क्लिक करके करते रहिए सर ठीक है थीक। ये सर नेटवर्क का प्रॉब्लम है एक्चुअली कल भी प्रॉब्लम हुआ था आईआरआई से मैडम का आज भी सुबह मैडम रितु जैन को प्रॉब्लम आई थी चलिए कोई आप ऐसे कर लीजिए सर कोई नहीं तो जैसा की हम डिस्कस कर रहे थे लीडिंग रिसर्च ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ऑफ मेडिसिनल मेटिक प्लान वी है फाइव सेंटर्स Uh, in the different locations for uh, multi locational trial and uh, having different types of uh, uh, medicinal aromatic plants uh, one center is a very uh, huge center situated at uh, pantanagar because we are supplying the planting material to uh, to all over india for different projects and different organization and we are also developing the, the number of varieties here uh if this center is about 117 uh, hectare then we have one center in uh, burada uh, hyderabad and uh, two center in uh, south india uh, bangalore and hyderabad for the subtropical crops then uh, uh, we have working on medicinal aromatic plant but uh, this this uh, seminar is focused on the aroma crops and uh, floriculture so we just touch upon the uh, aromatic crops uh, you all know that india is the largest producer and exporter of menthol mint menthavensis spearmint and uh, peppermint so these three crops uh, we have developed uh, uh, more than 10 varieties in this uh, in these crops and then basil we have about more than 64 accessions of basil and uh, we have uh, Uh, developed 12 varieties in basil then pacholi progressed man pacholi now we are importing the pacholi from indonesia so this is the very very good crop for uh, uh, cultivation for extraction of essential oil then citronella java and palma roja and lemon grass especially in bundelkhand region uh, we worked uh, uh, with these two crops palma roja and lemon grass and uh, two three districts in bundelkhand one is jalaon and another is uh, uh, Chhat, uh, chhatarpur they are cultivating menthol mint but uh, uh, in in limited space rose the roja damascena we have developed two varieties one is rani sahiba and another is uh, uh, noor jahan these two varieties are quite popular among the farmers for cultivation and extraction of essential oil as well as rose water 
so uh, these two uh, products apart from these two they are also making vulcan they are also making dried uh, petals for pot pourri then geranium we are we are working on geranium we have developed two three varieties and popularized this crop uh, among the farmers of uh, food hills areas then german chamomile matricaria chamomila we have developed two varieties in matro matricaria chamomila for extraction of essential oil and uh, uh, making dried flower for tea then vetiver uh, in bundelkhand region we have also popularized vetiver for uh, the extraction of essential oil then marigold we have all three uh, species testis minuta testis petula and testis erecta and developed varieties and also popularized among the farmers for cultivation uh, for their uh, flowers then nagarmotha then uh, jasminum grandiflorum and jasminum sambac we have two crops uh, which is quite popular among the farmers of kannauj and south india uh, uh, region then rosemary one one uh, very good uh, flower uh, which is having good essential oil very precious essential oil that is davana artificia pallens then ginger and eucalyptus so these are the some aroma crops apart from these aroma crops we have uh, other crops uh, which we are working and uh, uh, popularizing among the farmers and also develop the varieties so these are the crops uh, uh, which cmap is pioneer for uh, uh, the popularization among the so these are the some varieties we have developed and popularized among the farmers like in menthol mint uh, uh, we have developed varieties kosi simkranti and recently we have developed variety of uh, simunnati uh, then uh, in geranium we have simbavan and simbio 11 One seven one, then sim brithi in vetiver, uh, uh, then sim somya and sim ayu in uh, osimum basilicum and osimum sanctum. Apart from these are some pictorials. Uh, then Krishna, Krishna is quite popular among the farmers in Bundelkhand region and other parts of the country for extraction of essential oil. We have developed apart from varieties and agro technology breeding. We have uh, developed the uh, Uh, designs and uh, the uh, uh, extraction uh, facilities earlier farmers are using this poor and unsafe processing technologies for extraction of essential oil but uh, we have developed the uh, improved distillation technologies and popularized among the industries and farmers for extraction of the essential oil and these uh, uh, distillation units can be installed in their field because uh, there is no need of uh, the electricity we only need uh, these are the direct fired units and we have also boiler operated units which uh, if, if you are going to extract the essential oil of rose essential oil of geranium essential oil of chamomile then you have to have a sophisticated distillation unit that is uh, boiler operated distillation unit steam distillation unit for extraction of essential oil due to Uh, the availability of essential oil is in lower uh, uh, quantity but in case of the aromatic crops like mint uh, uh, vetiver and uh, lemon grass citronella osimum so we can use direct uh, fired distillation unit this is field distillation unit it is quite popular among the uh, farmers and we have installed more than 30 units in uh, bundelkhand region for extraction of this essential oil and popularized more than 5000 acre area uh, in the in the in the bundelkhand region of 14 districts so we have also uh, uh, have small units which can be operated by women for extraction of uh, the rose water uh, because uh, the number of temples uh, uh, the, uh, having the ro roses and they are throwing uh, for creation the pollution so we are utilizing these these uh, flowers for making incense stick and rose water also so and we have uh, the technology for uh, the tractor mounted uh, mobile distillation unit if if farmers is situated and their crops is in remote places then we can send this uh, uh, tractor mounted uh, mobile distillation unit for their distillation of crops in various regions so these are the some improved distillation units 
which which uh, the design and uh, all these uh, 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 even we are also we are also uh, we, we are we are also uh, popularizing these designs uh, among the farmers and industries and we are uh, providing and uh, turnkey basis consultancy for the these uh, designs to the farmers apart from the extraction of essential oil uh, uh, we have uh, developed this uh, recycling of offered flower technologies from uh, this 2011 and we have uh, published number of papers from 2011 to till now and uh, uh, we have popularized this technology among all the uh, shrine boards major shrine boards like uh, sirdi sai baba ma vaishno devi then uh, vindavasini then deva sharif then crpf times we are also popularizing this technology among the uh, inmates of the jail women uh, women inmates of the jail then mahakal so so uh, we are offering this uh, technology and these two uh, uh, startups uh, having uh, they they got train, trained by us in 2015 that uh, this uh, ankur and uh, this agarwal uh, uh, startups which is now utilizing the flowers in kanpur so they trained uh, by us in 2015 and they uh, started their business in kanpur so uh, uh, most of the sign boards are uh, utilizing their offered flower for making incense sticks and fragrance cones so uh, this is the some pictorial view of uh, the uh, uh, process of uh, utilization recycling of the flowers in sirdi and ma vaishno devi so uh, in sirdi in one day about more than 1 to 2 ton flowers uh, offered by devotees and uh, these flowers are earlier these flowers are throwing here and there so we we uh, implemented our technology with one ngo uh, then uh, they they uh, started this activity in 2017 and now they are making more than 3 lakh sensor stick per day and the selling as a uh, prasad as a, as a uh, token of appreciation uh, from the sai baba temple in same in same uh, process we have implemented in ma vaishno devi uh, in ma vaishno devi there is no offering of flowers but uh, in in the navratri uh, they they decorated their uh, temples and more than 10 to 12 ton fl dried flowers are available so we uh, implemented this technology uh, in uh, the vaishno devi also so and apart from the offered flower uh, 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 making of the incense stick we developed the technology for extraction of lutins uh, which which is uh, and we also uh, uh, transferred this technology to our industry they are making lutins for uh, poultry feed and also use in uh, the making of vitamin a apart from this uh, we have technologies for uh, making uh, gulab uh, uh, this uh, dried dried powder of this these flowers and they are using as a as a in holy holy uh, flower so recently uh, our uh, honorable chief minister of uttar pradesh has launched one uh, one uh, brand that is uh, goraknath brand uh, and they are they also implemented this technology in their uh, temple goraknath uh, temple uh, in 2020 so uh, and apart from these uh, these are the uh, brands available in the market these are the brands uh, using our technology in sai baba in uh, uh, in delhi all, all the temples uh, one uh, our startup that is recycle astha is uh, implementing this technology in all the temples of uh, delhi and creating the employment opportunities for the women especially for the women apart from these uh, 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 these technologies we have developed number of products which are uh, offering these technologies for startup and msmes uh, using the essential oils and uh, uh, aroma uh, products like we have technologies for skin care hair care disinfectant mosquito repellents uh, pain relieving uh, oils and creams 
the nutraceutical and recently we have developed uh, diffusers for uh, and these diffusers are uh, uh, effective on uh, uh, covid 19 viruses and we have patented all these products in india as well as in uh, foreign these are the some our products skin care formulations like cracknil uh, all purpose cream lip balm anti preventive face wash and then uh, acne uh, cure gel then clingy then after uh, after save gel these are the technologies that are already commercialized by our msmes and startups and uh, we also offering these uh, technologies to other uh, companies and startups and transfer for the period of 10 years. Then hair care formulation, we have geranium active shampoo uh, for dandruff, anti-dandruff, then Herbi Soft. Then uh, we have a very good pain relieving formulation using essential oils like Pain Chew and Relaxomap. Then we have recently developed Pain Jar. This is the cream-based uh, uh, formulation without any uh, chemicals. Then disinfectant formulation, we have uh, uh, Swabi. Swabi is an essential oil based disinfectant that can be used in kitchen platform, cabinet floor, bathroom, even in our mobile phones, we can disinfect. Then uh, flow mop, then hang pool. Uh, then recently we have developed clean jump. And uh, we have also uh, having a good formulation of nutraceuticals and these Simpausak and Simphalse. So these two formulation is having very good uh, immunity boosters. Then we have number of formulations of mosquito repellents in spray form, in cream form, even in incense sticks form. So apart from the technology, we have uh, the uh, uh, incubation facility for the startups and MSMEs and even students can start their business. And uh, our minister, uh, 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 the then Minister Honorable uh, Harsvardhan ji was uh, inaugurated our this business incubation center in 2016. And now we have supported more than 63 incub incubations, uh, young uh, startups from this incubation. And they are, they are commercialized our formulation uh, in the market. And some are uh, having, uh, they, they, they established their own uh, own factory, own company uh, with the name of the, their startups. So uh, these are our uh, the incubation facilities. We have uh, uh, GMP facility for the manufacturing of uh, the herbal products and offering the, these facilities to our startups and youngsters to establish their business with the herbal formulation. So these are the some glimpses uh, which CMAP is working and offering the, our technologies and services to the industry and the startups, even in students who can, who can venture in the herbal technology and uh, uh, floral technologies for uh, their career. So thank you very much. This is all. Uh, we are very happy to answer your question. Even you can uh, write us on mail. So thank you very much, uh, Dr. Tomar, for uh, uh, giving this opportunity. And uh, we will happy to associate uh, the, these technologies with your uh, uh, Banda University because I am working uh, in Bundelkhand and uh, number of time we visited uh, with your university. So uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir, uh, for your nice presentation and a very brief. You have highlighted the importance and scope of the aroma technology where we can harness the potential uh, in this sector. So thank you so much, sir, uh, for uh, your presentation in a brief and uh, considering the time also you have uh, elaborated in a very brief. Sir, uh, naturally you are working in a Mundelkhand region. Definitely we will uh, take help you and we will be happy and it is our means uh, <clears throat> We are fortunate if we get a chance to associate with you to work together. So this is a, a, a highness for you for inviting us uh, to work together. So thank you so much, sir, uh, for accepting our request uh, and delivering a lecture. Uh, today's webinar, though you are busy and we invited you in, in 
very last hour but happily you accepted my request and readily available sir so my great my thankfulness to you sir my i express my gratitude to you sir thank you so much sir thank you thank you sir thank you thank you you are always welcome at csas sir your participant and yourself is always welcome and thank whenever you. we will visit uh, bundelkhand definitely we will meet you sir ji yes, sir thank you sir thank you thank you sir so next speaker or my, my participants uh, we have a last speaker on this technical session uh, dr uh, d dhana sekran uh, dhana sekran ji you are uh, connected mm -hmm. dr d dhana sekran ji ha kar liya tha mute ne mute kar diya tha panelist ne mute kar diya tha panelist bana diya sir unko कुछ प्रॉब्लम हो रहा है Dr. Dhana Sekran ji, you are connected. Yes, sir. I am connected. So you have an option to share the screen. Yes, sure. Because now you are placed. Yeah. Your video is not you on your video, sir. Yeah. One minute. Is it okay? Yeah. okay now your system is here so thank you dr dhana sekran ji uh, 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 so this uh, very important lecture will be delivered by dr d dhana sekran ji assistant professor department of horticulture anna malai university tamil nadu and uh, this topic is very important the topic is plant pigments the origin of original colors and uh, dr dhana sekran ji is very uh, is actively engaged uh, in the work of uh, this uh, plant pigmentation uh, extraction of the plant pigments so we invited uh, him uh, for uh, this uh, webinar and uh, he is uh, very much engaged uh, about this uh, uh, technology So the plant pigments, uh, how this pigment can be extracted uh, from this uh, uh, flowers. Acho, headphone ka. So, Dr. Adi Dhana Sekran is assistant professor, horticulture and landscape gardening department of horticulture, faculty of horticulture, Anna Malai University, Anna Malai, and uh, he is MSc and PhD, R&D course Israel, PMC at the Netherlands, and working at the. मैडम रितु जैन जी आपका आप मक्का म्यूट कर लीजिए मैडम आप एंड ही कंप्लीटेड थ्री प्रोजेक्ट्स एज ए को पी आई एंड टू प्रोजेक्ट्स ऑन गोइंग एंड वन बुक एंड फोर्टीन बुक चैप्टर्स and many research papers 30 33 national and international 15 international papers and uh, he visited many countries like sri lanka france israel the netherlands germany and belgium and uh, many fellowships have been uh, awarded by the various societies uh, and uh, he is uh, coordinating other academic affairs at the nmla university department of horticulture so thank you so much dr d dhana sekran ji for accepting our request as a key resource person as a key note key speaker and this is very important aspect about the plant pigments how the pigments can be extracted from the flowers and it can be commercialized so yeah, this is a very new aspect uh, means uh, though herbal dyes is very uh, means the process is uh, 
very ancient but uh, in a normal way in a commercialized not people don't know at uh, the grassroots level yeah, yeah. so i am very much thankful to you sir so once again i welcome you please go ahead sir uh, yes uh, thanks for the uh, introduction and uh, your voice is uh, not clear sir now it's okay a little bit better uh thanks for the opportunity better. yes thanks for the opportunity to me uh, for the organizers and uh, it's a lunch hour that's one to two i have been given the chance of speaking with about uh, plant pigments i just uh, brief my presentation in 10 or 15 minutes i hope everybody was hungry and uh, with this hungry stomach nobody is uh, ready to listen uh, to look about the colors and everybody is just look about their routines and food right i just uh, speed up my presentation uh, okay as we know that the color is the first thing we register when we assess anything and make a immediate response uh, to it before anything else because color is a major part in our life as we know there are enormous numbers of colors which are all uh, uh, pro produced by the private sectors government sectors and the research institutes in uh, promoting various kinds of plant pigments in their uh, in all the flower floriculture crops as we know that uh, some is uh, many is developed through mutation and as we know that all the technologies so not just we are looking about taj mahal roses and we are all now with the tinted roses and dual duet roses with multiple number of colors uh, as we are visual, visualizing here every year they are producing multiple number of colors roses and this is what the impression of uh, life whatever we are having right okay now uh, where are this colors are utilized in the industrial sector when you are looking about the first one is the food sector and the drinks sector another one is inks and paints natural dyes are having more popularized nowadays and the textile sector textile is very majorly uh, we are concentrating on and then the miscellaneous we can also have tattooing and then this uh, uh, mehendi and other things we are just uh, working out with generally when you classify plant pigments we have got uh, uh, four major categories the first one is the chlorophylls then the carotenoids then the flavonoids and the betalanes so all the pigments majority of the pigments are get into these compounds we have got carotenes anthophylls anthocyanins arones chalcones flavonols proanthocyanidins beta cyanins and beta xanthins okay now coming to the chlorophyll as we know that it is uh, produced from the leaves of course it is quite interesting that many of the plants are giving a blue color when we are going for extracting uh, the things when you searching for chlorophyll some other compound will come that is what a beautiful story which i am going to tell you now the next one is the carotene pigment as we know that it absorbs blues and indigo light and provide rich yellow and oranges where carrots oranges are the good example where lycopene canxanthin astaxanthin or the some of the compounds where we also have tomatoes guava red grape fruit papaya and rose grapes or some of the watermelon are some of the examples of carotene okay coming to the flavonoids as we know it is coming from flowers and fruits as we know that uh, flowers means yellow of course it is also having an yellow color uh, pigment uh, which is located in the cytoplasm of the plasmids so first we look at the history that where it comes from from the plant then we can go into that and how we are going to extract it and what is the compound and what for it is going to be get used you okay, now coming to the uh, anthocyanin pigments take their color from the range of red purple and blue blue that is depending on the ph of the crop right and yellow color flavonoids are from uh, chalcones found in flowers and the organs of the flowers and aerons in the flowers and bark some woods are some of the examples of flavonoids okay then uh, uh, beta lens two sub group one is beta cyanin and beta xanthin which is yellow to orange that is the yellow to orange tinge uh, this is again a very important color nowadays okay now there are a number of plants which are uh, uh, which are identified and which are all yielding colors as we know tomato indigo indigo for tinctoria and then henna madder which are all the european uh, indigo and beetroot as we know that it is indian mulberry and wood is again in uh, european uh, origin and uh, rock plema it is loranthus and custard apple nettles and our own turmeric and sapan sapan wood is very popular for the yellow light yellow color or i can uh, or light tint or tinted color and coming to the floral sector this is all the general plant sector coming to the floral sector um, we have got uh, uh, marigold jelia lily saffron rosalie anato 
salidago and safflower these are all the major uh, pigments which are all extracted from plants we will just see one by one as we know that uh, as we discussed the red orange pigment producing plants we have a, a number of list rosely and anato henna beetroot tomato sapan and safflower and blue producing plants we have got the madder that is rubia tinctoria indigo indian indigo we have got indigo for tinctoria which is an indian origin and who is that is tinctoria which is about european origin and one more crop is called as a polygonium tinctorium which is again an european origin of course i could not uh, able to keep it here i forgot to keep it here and then yellow base plants we have salidago we have got uh, saffron we have got marigold we have turmeric and we have golden rod these are all the crops which yields yellow base producing plants okay okay now coming to the madder so madder is a uh, european uh, plant where uh, the the root is an important part here so from the root we are uh, getting uh, some uh, uh, turkish red color we can able to see that this is mainly used for the dyeing the yarns this is rubia tinctorium and we have got enormous number of shades for different cloths materials so this is the root pieces and from the root pieces it just by oxidation and uh, uh, soaking and oxidation we could able to get an array of colors uh, as far as madder is concerned uh, the next one is anato anato is a orange red color yielding plant uh, as we know that the lipstick plant uh, just uh, when you open up the seed flower we have got some seeds and we just have a small drop of water which will be long lasting in your finger for long time when you try this so this is again a very good example for carotenoid pigments as far as uh, a red color is concerned the next one is uh, this is what the pigment we have got uh, the reddish to yellow tinge which is obtained here and we also have this saffron uh, color here from this uh, crop then rosely subdarifa this is hibiscus subdarifa rosely uh, which is again this calyx is very important the calyx has got this uh, red color uh, which is again from this red color we could able to get uh, this uh, 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 red color pigment powders we have got and this is again used in the food industry in large baking industry and food industry as large the next crop is very common vegetable beetroot beta vulgaris uh, which is a root vegetable where we have got red violet color which is called as beta xanthines yellow orange color okay uh, coming to the procedures as far as the cloth dyeing things we have got two different one is modern dye another one is wet dye so this among the these two uh, dyes uh, among the two different dyes uh, we could the uh, Uh, we could get a conclusion that all the textile dyes have uh, soaking oxidation and then extraction as far as here we have to cut into pieces we have to macerate and we have got two technologies one is conventional technology another one is emerging technology that is what ultrasound micro ultrasound microwave pulse electronic field gamma radiation all these things are emerging technologies and olden technologies the solvent extraction fermentation preservation technique and then later on it is filtration concentration and then tea by products and then we main product coming to henna which has got uh, some beautiful colors in your fingers uh, and this has got uh, extracted through ultrasound assisted extraction nowadays in which is very popular here and then uh, golden rod that is salidago canadensis which is again uh, an yellow color bright yellow color which we are getting it and enormous numbers of uh, uh, colors or uh, uh, grades are obtained as far as salidago is concerned so from the floral part of course this is used as a filler flower in the floriculture sector and this uh, filler flower we could able to get a beautiful uh, dyed yarn of yellowish tint the next crop very informative and inform important crop that is tagetis erecta which is a uh, carotenoid and lutein and uh, this is again very common as the previous lectures they used to tell about the extraction procedures of all these carotenoids and xanthophylls of course very important crop now ruling the market in the food industry uh, the next one is saffron that is crocus sativus uh this is again an important uh, uh dye used for food industries right yeah the next one coming to the blue based dyes one is the satis tinctoria that is dyed wood which is again not an indian plant it is an european plant of course you could able to find that in uh, in uh, 17th uh, 1752 they used to extract this uh, uh, satis tinctoria by means of human uh, crushing manual crushing and then they used to extract the blue colored uh, tinted dyes and this is what the crop is this is the crop and this is the inflorescence and the leaf itself you are able to get this blue color it is quite interesting now to look at the blue color as i am working with this crop uh, we get this blue color dyeing uh, since a decade and uh, the extraction process is very simple just keeping boiling the uh, uh, soaking the leaves boiling the leaves 
and then allowing the leaves and kept for oxidation. After oxidation, this is what the principle of all the blue dye yielding plants. After oxidation, what happened? Ultimately, the dye indigo releases into the water and then after oxidation, it will settle down and then the top layer of the water was removed and then the bottom was collected. That is what their final product is. The next one is polygonium tinctorium, that is tiny indigo or uh, Japanese indigo, which is again uh, very popular, where we have got induxyl beta diglucoside, which is again a very important uh, dye here. And this is what uh, the polygonium tinctorium, and we will be able to get this dye powder out of this green leaf just by soaking it. Uh, see, I, as I told, there are two types of dyes. One is modern dyes, another one is bad dyes. So modern dyes are uh, again a natural dye. Uh, element which aids the chemical reaction to take space between the dye and the fiber. This is what the fixing of the uh, dye with the fiber. That is what quite important here. And uh, coming to the VAD dyes, uh, which, is, which has got protein and cellulase being introduced in the surface of the fiber while in uh, soluble form and then converted into insoluble form. The VAD dyes include many synthetic dyes, but also the natural dye indigo and the ancient dye and purple dye extracted from the shellfish. Right. Okay, now... Uh, Coming to my own crop, that is Indian indigo, indigo for a tinctoria. Uh, as we know that this indigo is a, is a very important crop in uh, during Bengal, uh, during the British uh, part, that is in 1920 or uh, 1800s, all the farmers are forced to cultivate this Indian indigo just for extraction and then taking all the dye uh, to UK. That is what the big story, right? So now coming to the crop, actually this is a uh, normal uh, green color crop. When you just keep the crop, collect the crop, and, uh, and when you soak it in the water, ultimately uh, after 24 hours or after 12 to 18 hours, what happens? The water become bluish. Okay, remove the leaves and then just throw it away. When you just stir the container, you could get dark green color after half an hour of stirring. This is what the story begins. Okay, then later on, when you go for oxidation, so we found out the process, it is an oxidation process. When you go for oxidation, what happens? After oxidation, the molecule which is present inside the water was getting downloaded into the soil, liberated the leaves, liberate all the things in the water. And upon oxidation, it has become a molecule which is present in the water, which settles down in the tank. So the top layer of the water was removed and then the bottom was collected as a slurry and then it was made as a cake. This is what the story. Now coming to the development of the crop, how can we improve the crop? So no varieties has been identified so far because all the dye crops or minor crops, nobody is quite interested to work in that angle. So no nutrition requirement was given, schedule was given, no cultural management was given. The farmers are cultivating since the British period in, in, in three generations there in my part, in some of my parts. And they cultivate the crop and they used to send it to one vendor and they used to make it the dye and then it is now uh, uh, exported in a huge volumes, the normal indigo dye, which is used for hand dyeing everything. Okay, now I wanted to interfere to in, in, in get into this research to improve the dye content. How can we improve the dye content or quantity out of this? Okay, these are the objectives of my experiment. And uh, this is the crop actually, this Indian indigo. Uh, it is quite interesting that I have collected more than 20 accessions all around the country. One, uh, This one is the promising one, which I could be able to collect it from Vishwabharati, Sriniket and West Bengal. And uh, it is quite interesting that the crop which is collected from here grows almost uh, two meters, that is around six feet height. And the crop which I have visualized, the, the, the difference is visualized in Kerala, personally, it's not more than one feet. So one feet to seven feet variability was there, leaf size variability was there, you can find it in the picture. And this is the exactly the crop under the pot which belongs to the family leguminaceae. And uh, I could interfere in the steps in extraction of this. One is the fermentation, oxidation, heating, filtering, and pressing. This is the quite normal procedure for all the day crops. So principally, the farmer, what they do is they just soak the, all the leaves here in the tank, big tank. And then for 24 hours, after that, they remove the, uh, the, the debris. And then they engage the laborers to, in, the, in, the, in the tank. And then they used to walk in the tank along with the water. And then this is what the part of oxidation they do traditionally. You can find here, this is what the oxidation they used to kick the water and it was the water was get oxidized. And now I just wanted to make a small pilot plant, pilot plot of making a fixing up a motor and a propeller, which are normally which used to propellate. This is what the soaking and steeping procedures. And this is after this is before steeping and this is after steeping. After steeping, I just remove all the water here and uh, this debris was removed. And then this is what the propellers, which is under oxidation. This is the oxidation procedures that you could able to see. 
and this is the erecting assembly which i would made and then after oxidation what happens it becomes blue color upon 20 minutes of oxidation but uh, normally the uh, uh, human lab labor they do the oxidation for 4 hours or 5 hours but this is 20 minutes oxidation it turns into blue color after uh, the aeration we have go, uh, found uh, this this much uh, uh, blue color and then the, the the compound will settle down after the compound settle down that copy the water was liberated out and then the settlement was burnt or uh, burn in uh, boiled in a, a copper vessel and this is the copper vessel after it was filtered out we could able to get uh, the powder and then the powder was the slurry and then it was made into uh, a president of form and then it was formed as a indigo cake this was the indigo story and this has got a very good result have a good export potential of this crop okay now uh, where i can interfere in this methodology this is the common methodology where uh, i can interfere and then uh, uh, to to start up with the research i took uh, i don't want to wait for 24 hours of steeping and also for oxidation so i wanted to have uh, multiple numbers one is the conventional method what are the normal procedures where the farmer is doing and then second one is microbial method of integrating the leaves third one is by hot water and fourth is by chemical methods okay the science begin this is when the tissue get damaged the indoxyl beta d glucosate which is liberated out and which is there in the there in the water and when it is oxidized it is liberated out and settled down in the soil this is what the formula where this is the uh, beta d glucosate and which forms indoxyl and then it turns to when it oxidizes then it turns to indigo this is what the science began this okay yeah now i have used this microbial population this effective microorganisms which contain pseudomonas fluorescens yeast actinomyces and lactobacillus and uh, this is the em based thing and uh, this procedure i have, i have followed the procedure which is albert again is a farmer normally they are doing it for three generations and then uh, i have i have made this one and hot water method it is done in uh, europe by uh, a scientist called stoker in wood the same procedure i have followed it for indian indigo and then the chemical method is uh, followed by bechtol in 2002 i have followed this one by adding uh, this uh, concentrated ammonia and calcium chloride so what all the technologies which i have observed observations is the ph of the uh, color of the steeping vat how much color or difference was there so at uh, different stages four hours or five hours like that and then coming to the fermentation we could able to get in 16 hours i can get 5 5 4 hours this 5.83 was obtained however as in 16 hours you can find the same in other methods so my among the methods microbial method proves good and uh, uh, coming to the color of the extract color of the steeping vat you can find here this is uh, conventional as well as the microbial method you could able to see and uh, this is uh, at this hour fourth hour sixth eighth hour itself you could able to get the blue color and here in 24 hours the same color was there so that minimizing the 24 hours to 4 hours is the study result and coming to the dye recovery and dye uh, in content i could able to get a maximum uh, dye recovery and indigo content in this microbial method which is again user friendly i have also tried this effluent uh, for the field and which has got less toxic to the uh, to the to the uh, ecosystem and these are all different grades where you could able to get the bright blue color which is obtained by microbial method this is what the finished product is and this is what the outcome of my research and uh, i just highlight uh, now uh, there are enormous scope for working with this crop because since the dye crops as like rubia tinctoria marigold because always people talking about marigold lutein and xanthophyll xant there are a number of dye crops which are all having quite potential uh, to start with and to uh, have uh, more uh, research objectives to be carried out to fulfill the requirement of the farmers and fulfill the requirement of the uh, people right so this is my contact number you can call me at any time and uh, colors are the smiles of nature let us uh, live with the colors thanks for the opportunity given any questions you can uh, just to uh, uh, post your uh, query questions in the whatsapp or in the mail and i'm just little bit sorry because uh, as i know that it is a lunch hour uh, i don't want to take much of your time let uh, the afternoon session goes with a normal schedule uh, bon appetite thank you very much for the opportunity dr thomas sir thank you thank you thank you so much dr dhana sekran ji thank you so much sir uh, it was my uh, means um, arrangement uh, because we could not invite you in the means uh, normal time uh, normal hours due to some uh, technical fault our technical team could not manage uh, the uh, to start the program in time so that's why uh, we could not manage you at invite in the scheduled time so i am extremely sorry for that 
but uh, the way you have presented the seminar uh, webinar the lecture and the topics you have covered and the, uh, the aspect you have raised it is very uh, means uh, untouched uh, for all of us uh, maximum and polyculturalist uh, the in others and the research work also you have conducted you have shown in a very smart way so thank you so much sir uh, due to some this uh, technical problem uh, we are running a uh, one hour late uh, so that's why but uh, within a very short span of time you have managed the lecture very smartly so i hope the participants uh, would have learned a lot uh, this uh, thing and definitely the questions will be raised by the participants it will be tra transmitted to you uh, by me and uh, the, this uh, contact will be forever uh, so thank you so much uh, dr dhana sekhan ji for accepting our request and uh, presenting this uh, uh, webinar and this very important topic about this pigments thank you sir thank you sir thank you very much for the opportunity once again uh, thank you so now the participants now it is lunch hour so again at 2 uh, 220 uh, we have a lecture uh, uh, from dr alka singh and others and plenty session also uh, will be there so we have i think uh, 30 minutes uh, uh, time for uh, put minutes for a lunch so we will leave uh, now and uh, so that again at 220 we will assemble uh, again we can uh, connect it so for a very important lecture uh, this lecture regarding uh, uh, flower arrangement and uh, dr mahavar sir will speak uh, uh, lecture about this uh, preparation of processed valued products of roje so 453 lecture dr bhai gupta sir also planned the speaker so once again i uh, express my uh, thanks to all the Uh, key note is key speakers uh, dr ritu jain madam dr bharti kasya dr rk srivastava sir dr didhana sekhan ji uh, for presenting the webinar this first technical session and i express my thanks uh, to all the uh, participants who joined and have shown their patience uh, for uh, connecting though we are connected with far from different different parts of this country uh they, they have some um, official business also some students also some faculty members also but they have shown their keen interest uh, my thanks to uh, university administration also they have provided uh, everything for organizing this program and uh, in departments uh, my hod dr ajay kumar singh ji he is sitting here uh, since morning with us and for motivating us and my beloved students department pg students who are here thank you so much and we will again join at 220 at sarp thank you once again